in Podcast Detroit, recording live. Prepare yourself for a hoppy drive. If you're chilling at home, pop that crowler and just kick back for the next two hours. It's the end of the week, so here's to the weekend. It's Better on Draft with Rob, Matt, Nick, and Ken. We are live, episode number 157 of the Better on Draft podcast. My name is Ken. Here we are in studio. We appreciate you all joining us. You can join us in the chat over at facebook.com forward slash better on draft as that's where we are live every single Friday. Feel free to ask questions to us as well as our guests. Starting off to my right, Nick, how you doing? I Whoa, that's lower me down, dude. I'm yeah. sorry. Wow. I mean, I, that's even loud for me. <laughs> Jesus. You should, you should see how we feel. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm doing great. How about you, sir? I'm good, thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, Nick. Thank you. I and yeah, yes, we were just talking about that before we started. And for those of you uh, that don't know, I am done with school for life. Unless you go back and become for a doctor, Nick. Uh, right? No, I, there's no doctors. Dr. Nick? Yeah, Dr. Nick. There's That's no doctors. There's no doctors. <laughs> Hell doctor. no. Hey. No. <laughs> Hi, everybody. All right, it's no doctor. Yeah, Doctor Nick. We probably just got shut down. Because yeah, of that, probably uh, that algorithm. Yeah, nope. Uh, Thanks, Facebook. Got my MBA coming my way pretty soon. My last what do you say? Life. Down by the bay, bay. eat some my clay. clay. <laughs> if I, you did, may. I, I just may. Uh, now we're I don't understand what today is because now I've heard a Billy Madison reference, a Hook reference, and now a Happy Gilmore reference. A Simpsons reference. <laughs> a Simpsons reference. I well, know. I mean, Simpsons are still topical. They're yeah. still on air. I think. Yes. Yeah, they are. Man. Somehow. Matt uh, Bush, how you doing? I'm well, oh, Ken, yourself? Good. Let's uh, skip you and go back to Nick. What are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the uh, Odd Side Nightman Leaveth. Uh, I got uh, last year's Great Lakes roasting. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, that's what you sound <laughs> like to the rest did of the you world. Record, did you record me? <laughs> no, Ken's <laughs> recording. Oh, we, we record every Friday on <laughs> oh. this show. <laughs> are you there's new? A, there's a bit of a delay. There's um, a bit of a delay. Uh, Great Lakes Coffee, uh, Great uh, Flying Buffalo. Oh, is that what that one yep, was? Yep, that's right. Yep, right there. Oh, hey now. And then oh, uh, okay. this, uh, what is this? this Gentle Jack Jones from Batch. Yeah, uh-huh. Gentle Jack oh, Jones bra- uh, Brown Ale. Is this last year's Flying that Buffalo? That is last yes. year's, yes. No, they, don't, they don't do bottles yeah, anymore, they, remember? Yeah, I, I didn't know if they put out the masses yeah. and cans no. and had... I, Come on, fuck me. It's, are, <laughs> we're just starting, no, okay? No, Matt. No. No, we won't. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, there's, there's two hours of this show. <laughs> We've co- only just begun. Uh, to live. Good Lord. Matt, how you doing? Well, I thought I was doing a lot better than I am, man. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. I've got my Diet Verners per use. Um, I'm sipping on some um, Batch Brewing Company's General Jack Jones. Really good, by the way. Yeah, I think... I, Jack Johnson, Jack, whatever, yeah, the boxer or the the musical artist. Um, no, isn't he the guy with the little? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. We, we just did this. It's a Grateful Dead reference, man. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and I brought some VSG. Some very stable from, very stable uh, from Axel. I went and stopped. I actually uh, met with the Bruce Brothers, obviously, or uh, ironically, at Axel. Me and Wayne and both Waynes sat down. We had we broke bread. Uh, we drank beers. Uh, did you give it to your disciples? Oh uh, well, one of the Waynes is part disciple. He's part of the Rebel Alliance, but um, Mr. Phillips is sturdy against us. So uh, we, I, I ordered him a right hams, now. and they would not buy us a hams I mean, at Axel. Sort of back story to this. I don't know what's happening right now. Nothing you really want to know. I just okay, troll right, these. Craft, I like to tra- right. troll craft beer boards and tell them to <laughs> drink hams and Coors Light, especially uh, the ones, especially the ones that we are really good friends with. Yeah. Yeah, the ones that actually like us. Yeah. yeah. And then every now and again, somebody else puts up a not craft beer or a low end craft beer. So like then I jump guy. on it like, yeah, no, like I like help them out, and promote oh, them. Yeah, gotcha. And then I run the, then I put the. Uh, like Blue Moon, it's the best wit beer of all time. This is craft as well, fuck. Well, Blue more, Moon. more like the PBR. <laughs> and then I just oh. throw like the Rebel Alliance GIF from Star Wars mm. in the comment section to just kind of get, get it going, see what happens. <laughs> It's so, um, oh, it's so Ken, what are you drinking? Uh, I've got the uh, the brown ale from Batch Brewing. <coughs> have you tried it yet? I have. It is definitely delicious. Yes. Um, easy to drink. This is probably something I would love to keep in my refrigerator. Uh, you guys can this, correct? Or is yeah, this canned yeah. just for me? No, yeah, we we just uh, canned a couple of four packs to bring here tonight. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, no. 
Uh, so we this is a, a beer that um, you know we we've been playing with a couple of recipes, uh, brown ale uh, recipes, and um, got this on local thirty at Hopcat and. People rediscovered that brown ale is a fun style to drink this year, apparently. Like, there's no craft beer you. industry, you know, without a couple of styles, and most of them are m- much maligned, right? People don't really drink ambers. People don't really drink brown ales. And there's no <laughs> craft beer industry in this country without these. And this year, they rediscovered brown ale, and people are into this beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been a long time coming. Man. Long and I, time coming. I told him ESB is next. ESB is next. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, man. Well, we had no, one wheel on the ground. We could have had three. <laughs> Rob, what's going on? Yeah, just chilling. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right, Ange. All, 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 hey. all around me, craft rules everything. That's, that's, that's what's going on with me. Craft rules everything around everything. me. Dollar, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. What are you? Uh, what are you drinking over there? Uh, kind of two fisting right now. I've got the uh, the batch gentle Jack Jones, and also cracked open a transient, uh, softly spoken rise, hmm. which is very tasty. Softly spoken. Both are very the, tasty. One hundred point three. That guy. That depends if you have to go to that voice. <laughs> if you need to. So but this uh, is a beer podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not for the beer podcast. We do have two guests in studio today. We do. Uh, representing Good Port, Dave. How you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. hey. Uh, what what you drinking? For, uh, I'm I'm drinking this uh, this delicious uh, Griffin Claw. Flying buffalo. It's flying you know what, buffalo, it. and it's uh, yeah. Get some of that, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Despite his. No, and style. this is last yeah. year's too, so yep. Um, yep. I'm enjoying it even, nice even more so. Um, I do, I do like some aged, even right on old older stuff. You know that's uh, that, that'll be my go to every once in a while. Nice. So. Oh man, it's boozy. What is yeah. your uh, just a quick and we'll ask the same for the for our other guests when we introduce them. What is your opinion on aging beers? Buy them to drink them or buy them to age them. I think it depends on the beer. Um, I will always buy if I'm going to age a beer. I'll always buy at least two. So I'm going to drink one right away, mm-hmm. and then I'll see what happens later on with that one. What if you can't buy two and you can only buy one? Do you I'm drink it? Probably going to drink it. All right. Yeah. All right. I, was, I want to. My cellar is very small. I want to ask a second question before we we venture too far. If your wife says I'm going to the store to buy, and what kind of beer do you want me to bring home? Uh huh. What are you telling her to bring? <laughs> I actually just got this asked this question when we were in Las Vegas, and I said, I don't care. <laughs> Grab me something because she was at a craft beer place. I said, grab me something. You know what I like. And she brought okay, home well, we don't a, know delicious, we like. an a delicious nin- <laughs> Ninkasi, uh, it was uh, Domination, I believe, which it's, it's, it's an IPA. Any of those words. Okay, uh, it was an IPA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Ninkasi Domination IPA. And uh, out there, super fresh. So, uh, And I don't think we get any of that over here. But okay. any, anytime I'm out there. So so you live uh, in Ann Arborish? Uh, Livonia, side. Plymouth okay. area. So if your wife is going to Bushes or Kroger's yeah. or Hillers, it doesn't uh-huh. exist, right? Yep. Hillers is dead. Uh huh. So if she says, "Hey, I'm going to I'm going to Kroger. Oh what uh-huh. do you want me to buy beer wise? Yep. You're having people over. What mm-hmm. are you telling her to pick up? Probably something lighter because I don't I don't got any. I don't have any friends that are like super into into craft as much as I am. Damn it! Okay, this guy's not being cooperative. Okay, no. Honey, you want a birth- specific? <laughs> you want a specific <laughs> style? Hun- honey, dude, it's your birthday. Give I'm me something. Buy, I'm gonna buy you steak and a beer. What beer do you want me give to? Give me something on? barrel aged. It's not okay. Like here we go. I will drink anything. Like I'm not gonna say I'm gonna stick to one one style. Like I'm. Do we have to put him on death row and ask I'm him what is I'm all over, man. Like this I'm a perfect I'm, thing, right? I'm all over. Like so, you're on death row. Yeah. The warden comes and says, "Yeah, you get a steak and your last beer. What's your last beer?" That's a really hard question. <laughs> yeah, that's a really hard See, question. See, if I got to pin you down, I'll pin you down. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be something barrel aged, but it's not gonna be a specific beer. Like I'm gonna have to be like, you know what? Give me a couple of days to figure this one out. You're gonna have to give. You're me dying a- on Tuesday. He's after you the beer on Sunday. I mean, it might be a get a stay from the governor. Chill out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah. picking the beer is important. It's an extremely. Uh, do you like your okay? Situation. So do you like your barrel aged beers mm-hmm. just straight stouty, or do you like fl- fruit in them? Like no, flavors? straight straight stouty boozy. You know what we'll do? We're just gonna get you some some Budweiser Copper Lager. Which is you know uh, aged and Jim mm. Beam bourbon barrels. Yeah, and, uh, uh-huh. yeah, that's it. That's, well, you that's know what? what you get if it's my last one. I'm not going to fucking complain about it. 
You know, I always thought. <laughs> I'll take I what I can get. <laughs> you're, about to, you're about to end Elon like, on hey, man, an hour. Man, what's it hey, going to matter, what you, right? Yeah, I it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to drink. Sir, I'm drink I was saying, just give me a 30 rack. It's about the same price. Yeah. And by the time you have to wheel me in, I'll be passed out. So you don't even need yeah. half the drugs. It's usually uh, it's usually something boozy, something chocolatey. Dude, I something feel like I'm warmer with this flying buffalo. Yeah, it's it's warm. Get a little toasty? Oh, absolutely. You know what? I would I would Good. ask for I would ask for 2017 flying buffalo. Have you had the mole yet? <laughs> <laughs> have you had the mole from no, this year? I have not. Go find it. That that, that, that one flew off the shelf. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we do have another guest in studio yes, from Batch Brewing. Why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Stephen. Hi. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> How are you? And what are you at Batch? What am I at Batch? What? I make a lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm the founder, founder and co-owner of Batch Brewing Company. This, this is my uh, is my happy place, and it's also the place I, I lose sleep over. But. Have you gotten really good at Excel then? Uh, no, no, no. Just because I make spreadsheets doesn't mean I've gotten Excelling. good at them. <laughs> wow. Doesn't mean I've excelled at Excel. Well done. Well done. Nice, I'm not ringing nice, no nice, bell. Nice, well no. Is that a camera? People it is a camera. It's a camera. We got, we got we're on Facebook we're live, live right man. now. We are super live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So um, no, it was uh, Batch was uh, my brainchild. Uh, it started as a uh, um, crowdfunding campaign, turned into a nano that turned into a little bit bigger than that. Um, opening our second location, doing the thing, man. Damn. Yeah. Where is the Where's, second location? Yeah, yeah so uh, the Batch Brewing Company. I know some company... real estate in St. Clair Shores that could use it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Here we go. You, you know an open place? Yeah, with breweries, uh, with the brew tanks already. Oh, wow. Right on. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, uh, the Funk Room is on the boulevard, on Grand Boulevard between Woodward and 75. Uh, it's kind of the border of uh, Milwaukee Junction and the North End. It's about six blocks east of the Fisher. Awesome neighborhood. Um, really engaged community. Um, a lot of stuff is changing over there. Um, we're operating over there. We've got a canning line. We're fermenting. We're doing mixed culture fermentation. We're doing some cider. We're doing some wine. And we also package our conventional beer over there temporarily until we expand Corktown and can move the canning line over there. Wow. So that gives you a lot of... Because, I mean, that whole new center area, there's mm -hmm. nothing oh, yeah. except that it's just going to be you. Well, well and, and it's interesting. So there's a ton in development. And most of it is, like, closer to that magic Woodward and Grand Boulevard corner. Mm -hmm. Baobab Fair is going in. Um, they won Hatch uh, not this past year the year before. And um, Godwin, who uh, owns the – what's the name of the, the – um, Oh, it's uh, place stuff. No, no. Okay, let's let's. Is it a person, place, or thing? I, you know what? You guys are putting too much pressure. On <laughs> it's called it's called Yum Village, and okay. it is oh, yeah. Caribbean and African and and jerk and and mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, he's opening over there as well. There are a bunch of other restaurant concepts and and other things. Um, Bridget, uh, co-owner of Eight Degrees Plato, opened yes. a home home, home goods yeah. store over there on Wilbur. Yeah, the, great spot. The, the, I keep I keep forgetting the name of that place every time I think of it too. Yeah, exactly. Just, I just saw the post just about happened it with me in yes. Young Village. Two <laughs> seconds. I'm with you, it's but you, you didn't you didn't get you it know happens. you know smacked also, around I was, like I, I did. Just, I didn't notice that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like <laughs> two words. So it's, it sounds like it's just like a really amazing place with all the with all the restaurants now starting to come up there at that intersection. Uh, we we saw this in in uh, Midtown. Now we're starting to see this in New Center. People will actually use the Q line, using the Q line <laughs> yeah, for something. Those poor poor souls. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I mean, I, when when you think about that neighborhood I in proximity to New Center and proximity to Midtown, mm -hmm. um, the neighborhood that our new location is is in on the Boulevard is going to be really independent. It's going to be really you know hyper local businesses. It's not going to be chains. It's not going to be big money. It's going to be people that are taking their passion project and, and trying to bring it to life and and you know grassroots you know bootstrap development it's gonna be a lot of fun so so i want to roll back a while um why corktown what was it about corktown that pulled you there what what where, where did you know batch all start yeah so i mean i've been homebrewing since i was uh uh 19 uh, it was I. I came to beer uh, kind of accidentally. I was not into beer when I was younger. You know, you hang out with buddies and everybody's drinking fizzy yellow lagers underage, and I didn't enjoy it. Um, I smoked a lot of pot. 
I did not like beer. <laughs> Makes you um, more creative. Yeah, right. That's what happened. That's that's, that's how we got here. It uh, it released right. the tannins. Yeah. Uh huh. There you go. Um, and uh, at some point, I discovered some uh, you know, kind of pseudo craft beers that had some flavor. I mean, shout out to Sam Adams and Pete's Wicked Ale, and you know, you discover some European things, and there's some amazing German beers. And at some point, I ended up with uh, Modit. Uh, Unibrew Modit, Modit. It's a, a Belgian dark strong. Yeah, we inspired. actually uh, we had Unibrew on maybe a year, and a year, half year and a half ago. Seventy two uh, and a half. I, I I can't say enough about you know that brand. I know that they're no longer independently owned and part of a conglomerate. And but what great beer! And that beer really turned me on. And it was like, all right, I need to figure out how to do this. And I worked at a little party store in Rochester Hills that uh, there was a beer buyer named Bill who convinced the owner to let him sell some homebrew supplies in one of the aisles in the party store, and I took home some five-gallon buckets and some ingredients, and I was hooked. That was it. Uh, mm-hmm. Fast forward to moving into the city. I moved into Detroit about 10 years ago, nine years ago, and had to give up the homebrewing hobby. I didn't have a basement and a garage and a, you know the space to, to make messes, and I didn't really want to go back to malt extract brewing on a stovetop. So I was trying to open like a co work space for home brewers. I was very corporate gig at that at point. Couldn't find a way to do that legally. Uh, met a dude who owned a building in Corktown. So that's how I ended up in Corktown. I was introduced through some friends to a guy who owned a building on Michigan Ave. And we were working on opening it there. And that did not work out in that space. Uh, we had qualified for some grant dollars through the old Tiger Stadium Conservancy. So we were actively looking for a space in Corktown because you don't really walk away from 50 grand when you don't have a business open. So we found uh, a building that used to be the Porter Street Station. If you're from Detroit, have you spent any time around Old Tiger Stadium back in the day. It was the only full-service restaurant in Detroit. You can go get a burger and a beer and a shot anywhere near Old Tiger Stadium back in the day, but this was the only place you could go get a steak, that you could go and get a salad, that you could go and get full-service. Um, and oh, quirky little building with a train car attached to it. And we walked in, and the price was right, and things worked out. And we were able to kind of prove that you could open a business in Corktown, not on Michigan Avenue. And ah. now Ford's moving in. <laughs> Jackpot. More, more business. So every time I, you know, I, I'm in all these, you know, Facebook groups that are involving beer, uh, and not even just beer, but like Detroit as a whole. And anytime somebody from out of the area says, "Hey, I'm going to be in Detroit. Where should I stop and get a good beer and a and a good meal?" Every, you know, it's literally 20 comments, and 18 of them are batch brewing. You guys tagged in. So what is that? I mean, I don't know, A, do you guys get all those notifications, and B, what's it like to just kind of see that, that Facebook, that social media love that anytime somebody from out of the area is asking where do we go in the area, you're like number one with a bullet? First of all, it's incredibly flattering. It's a dream come true. You know, we, we you got to kind of walk the, the tightrope when you see all these comments. You don't want to... I, I don't particularly want to interact with them too much so it feels self-aggrandizing or we're opening ourselves up to any sort of, I don't know, just there's a lot of great craft beer in Metro Detroit, in Michigan in general, and there are a lot of great options. And I don't, I don't feel like us you know, underlining other people's organic suggestions about going to check us out necessarily adds value. Um, I I think it's incredibly flattering, and I don't disagree, especially when you layer on top of the beer the food that Chef Matt and his team puts together. We've uh, g- our team is a family, and my business partner Jason Williams and I have known each other for nearly twenty years through music, and Chef Matt and he have known each other for like thirty five years, wow. way Damn. back in the day. Jason's daughter is Chef Matt's niece. They have. You know, they, they've been connected since high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, Batch Brewing Company mm-hmm. repatriated Jason from St. Louis and Chef Matt from Jonesboro, Arkansas. So this is a really, like, a, a very committed, deep family of people who have come together with uh, passion around beer and food and service and experience and show up and put 70 hours in a week. We love what we do. Can I jump wow. in here real quick and just yes. add, add right. to, uh, you know, he, Steven is uh, super humble, and he's a great dude, so he's not going to comment on it. So when I see these comments on Facebook, and I'm usually one of those people that throw a batch, Steve and I uh, met right before they're about to launch Indiegogo. So 
And this was like right when I started Good Poor. It was like nothing. And uh, I saw what he had going on. And I was like, I want to help promote this thing. So from early on, like I was like, dude, whatever the hell he's got going on, like this is going to be major. So I made it a point to make sure that I stuck by this guy to see how he progressed from the very beginning. I mean, aside from the homebrewing stuff. But once he started to get out and put out what he was about to do, I was like, dude, I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be promoting this forever. Like, I'm gonna be by this dude's side and like help, at least let people know what the hell's going on over there, uh, and to see where it came from, where it started, to what it's grown to today is like, I'm super pumped for these guys because, it, it, honestly, it's probably one of the biggest grassroots movements in craft beer in the state of Michigan that I've ever seen. And that's not an understatement. You're making like, me blush. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it, it, it's super impressive, man. Like, like you see a lot of people. They, 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 they get their money up, and they, those dudes hustled their asses off from the very beginning to make it what it is today. And basically, what you said, eighteen out of twenty comments on a where should people go in Detroit if they're going to a game or something in Detroit, anything in Detroit, and these guys are like number one with the bullet. Like that says a lot. And it shows a lot from where they started and where they ended up now. And that's uh, what 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 year anniversary are you coming up in February? Uh, February will be four years old. Four, four years old. All right. Wow. So take that in context. When you know what brewery you start talking you about batch like, brewing what brewery company. Do you are in the state of Michigan? Um, no, not in the state of Michigan. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Federally, it's but, but yeah. I, so okay, thank you. That's really flattering. <laughs> and I just, no, no. I, I just I, there's there's something there's something just to continue to reiterate and 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 like be aware of that like God, the fucking craft beer scene in Michigan is so collaborative and yep. so Definitely. just cares so much about each other and wants to see everybody succeed. And the fact that Dave, man, we were. I mean, you got to, you have been like 26 or 27. You were, how old are you now? Uh, 34. So, yeah, you were 28. You're 28 or 29. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and I mean, the fact that with no sort of like history other than telling a good story, that people are able to come together and figure out how to collaborate and work together. And for five, that's five years ago, five years later, like we're sitting in the studio, you know, hanging out, talking about Dave's future projects and things that we're going to do together and the expansion pack, all the stuff he's helping us with that. Like that, that does not happen in most industries. It no, happens in very right. few. No, yeah. And craft beer like tells a, an incredible story about uh, generosity like human generosity that mm -hmm. does not happen in most industries, let alone in food, let alone in beverage. But like craft beer's got got a very specific thing that I ought mean, to be recognized. We've we've had countless people on this show talk about what you just described the the camaraderie, the community, the, part, the, community, the partnerships, uh, not only with each other, but with, you know even going back as far as with the communities are concerned. You know, was it what Redline they had their what fire the, the or, fire the in, fire yeah, and then the first location the, yeah the very first location open for a week open, yeah. yeah open for a week in Burton and then wasn't there a, it was a neighboring brewery a couple miles down the road. Help them out bringing building materials. Yeah, brought a truck to help uh, yeah, to rebuild move and stuff. Yeah, yeah to yeah, build, yeah. move and rebuild. You know what they started, oh, and um, oh, you're right. You probably don't see that. Oh, there we go. No, you, oh. Don't. You, you don't. You don't see that don't in see other that. industries. Well, we got, what what, what did we just? What did we just? Yeah, crack? What, what did we just? Crack? Uh, this is my favorite, and I had to I jump the gun. It's uh, Dick Smasher. Dick Smasher. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, do you this... put that in your mouth or? Definitely. Okay. Uh, There's actually a great story about Dick Smasher. Uh, there are a couple of uh, employees, Courtney and a previous employee, their birthdays were in the same month, and both women. And we said, hey, your birthday's coming up. Let's do a collaborative beer. And they said, we want to do what is the opposite of what would be perceived as a girly beer. Let's do an enormous stout. You know, we talked through, wrote a recipe together, and that became this beer. And as we were naming it, we thought about, like, what is the opposite of this fucking misogyny? How in craft beer in 2018 are people still putting <laughs> pinup girls on beer labels? So this is the Pigeon opposite. Hill. As opposed to... <laughs> it's your grandma, okay? That's not pinup girl. As, as, as opposed pin up to... Granny? Like, pin up granny? Pin up granny, yeah. And, and, and as, people as are a, into that shit. 
Yes, but why? <laughs> Lazy. Exactly. There's, there's, why? Uh, look, if you would like to watch pornography, there is plenty available on the web. Oh, yeah, totally. But using the objectification of women to sell beer is fucking lame. It's boring. It's played out. I think, uh, lame. Not uh, only played out, but like we've evolved beyond yeah, that as sure. a fucking yeah. species. Sure. And if you can't wrap your head around that, like... Get out. Buckle up. Was it uh, was it last year or the year before that that uh, Brewers Association actually had? They I did. believe that entire, was last year. They had an entire session about mm-hmm. this specific topic and misogyny what they on, would, yeah. on beer yeah. labels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was because that, that, uh, basically news any, to me. I'm just asking. They yeah. really had a topic about. I think it was at CBC. Okay, last year. Okay. maybe I could be completely wrong, okay. but I know that it was the Brewers Association. They had a com- they had a whole session on it. Okay. about labels and that. They would not be openly promoting any beer right. of any brewery in the United States mm-hmm. that did exactly that. So they basically. Right. So let me let me kind yeah. of put it, let me put it this way: <sighs> yeah, the, the Brewers Association has their <laughs> logo on independent brewer right. labeled well, beer. Well, yeah. well, hold on. Yep. So breweries like yep. Bell's, Bell's yeah. not not breweries like Founders. Yeah. So, so um, if they saw that. They would say, "Please take, basically, take our logo no, off." No, they were just not allowed. Or they just wouldn't necessarily. Here, here's here's how it. the uh, how that logo works. So mm-hmm. you basically apply. You write an email and you apply and you say, "Hey, we want to use this logo," and they send you the package and they tell you exactly what you're allowed to do. Sure. I don't know specifically if that's yeah, nope. if yeah. that's part of it. Sure. If it is, then I'm sure they would write a strongly worded letter. To whichever brewery decided to strongly put that logo. worded. <laughs> well, you have to to whichever uh, beer that that logo was on. There, oh. There's a fee to use that logo too on your cans, or your bottles, or etc. Um, uh, I don't no. believe so. Oh, somebody had told Wait, me that there was a no. fee that they comes were with. lying. Yeah, um, they basically send you the folder, and you here you go. Oh, maybe maybe they include that around. in their membership. To me, to this. Yeah, well, I'll pull maybe. another one. Yeah. Whether that one's just, now, let's talk about the good. Well, anyways, let me. Well, but just before before we get before we move on from the the idea of um, the labels and misogyny, yeah. uh, Courtney is um, Courtney Burke, who uh, sales and marketing up, for Batch Brewing Company. Hi, Courtney. Um, <laughs> she is taking this idea of Dick Smasher kind of as a platform and creating a conversation in uh, both the service industry, restaurants and bars, um, but as well craft beer and uh, hosting a series of conversations and meetings with women, and then both women and men in the industry to talk about how women are objectified within the industry is plural, right? The service industry and the beer industry Mm -hmm. with Dick Smasher kind of as the springboard into that conversation. Interesting. It is. It's It's, it's it's also a a very cool idea, and I, I, I... I, uh, I I shared it with a, a bunch of people, and including my wife, who is not in the service in- industry, mm-hmm. uh, but she feels strongly about uh, you know misogyny and how, sure. where that conversation is right now, uh, as well as her mother. So those two are both signed up for. Awesome! Batch, I didn't right know that. Spent. Right on, man. Up here. <laughs> well, so we, um, we've talked about Fermenta. So is is there another group that you? That it's not. It's not a group. Them? This is just a conversation. This is an yeah. organic conversation, and it's kind of like a like a like a forum. Almost. It, it's a forum. It's, it's, like a, a, it's a very casual. If you conversation. had to like put it in a like a, like a place like a platform, it'd be like a like an internet bo- forum, basically. Where but they, in real life. But in real life, yeah. Right. Um, it, it's it, as far as a business owner. Like first of all, I will not be a leader of mm. this conversation. I can't be because sure. a conversation about patriarchy and misogyny shouldn't be led by a dude. So mm-hmm. there is something yeah. heady here. The idea of like me cultivating this brand over the last five years and then handing it over to an employee and saying, I trust you. You know my brand. Run with it. We are on the same page about this. Go accomplish your goal. We, we, we co-sign on what you're trying to do. Fucking high five. So there's an opportunity for us to play a role, to continue to empower all sorts of people. I've had access to a lot of things that not everybody has. And to utilize that position to mm-hmm. try and accomplish some fucking common human decency in this world sure. uh, is a no-brainer. And, and Dick Smasher gets to play a little bit of role in that. And I'm, I'm pumped. That is, I'm pumped. That is the nice. most 2018 shit I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. That's well, we we really got like a month left of it. I might be 20. You, are, you are the Justin Trudeau of the beer world. <laughs> Justin Trudeau. <laughs> I've never been. Just I've never been complimented here. better than that <laughs> in my fucking life. Let's, uh, let's switch gears. Yes. a little bit. We got uh, Dave. Good pour. Yes, sir. Well, explain to us those that have not heard of it, including myself, including yeah. Matt. So, what is good pour? 
It originally started off. Uh, I'll go and, and tell the the entire story. So go for it. It originally started off as I wanted to basically for like uh, like things like Detroit area craft beer enthusiasts. Sure. Like that was the initial idea. It, it was really simple at the time because it was back in like God 2010 2011 before like right at the time when uh, Michigan craft beer was. At like 125 breweries. Yeah, we're about a third of what we're at today. <laughs> exactly. Probably maybe in a quarter of what we are at. Today. Exactly. Sure. So, so we're at uh, about 125 breweries in Michigan. Yep. I'm just getting turned on to what this industry is. Yep. And I said, you know what? This is cool as hell. I'm going to start promoting it by taking a picture of this beer, which my mm-hmm. in-laws got me a subscription to the Craft Beer Club of America. So for six months, <laughs> I was getting 12 packs of craft beer from around the United States. Wow. So, I thought that was illegal. Depends on what state you're in. <laughs> so in, Mi- in Michigan, yeah. it seems like it's okay. Well, you can receive it. You can't necessarily send it out. So I don't remember where send it was it. being sent from. But I was getting Michigan beer in that package. I got sure. Atwater and uh, Rest in Peace Michigan uh, Brewing Company uh, before they, they went out. Um, but that was like the initial thing. So I started They're still going. around. <laughs> Hanging You don't know this? Where, hanging where, No, around? I don't know that. I don't know this. They're still around. That's Michigan Brewing Company? It, Michigan Brewing Works now. Okay, there you go. Hanging Is that the, the creepy looking house? Place? Yeah, it's the Blair Witch okay, Brewery. Yeah, we'll, talk, okay. we'll, right. we'll talk about yeah, that right. during the break. So it, it all started with this package that I was getting sent every month, and I was taking pictures of it and, and sending it out there and talking about what I liked about it. And um, From there, I was like, you know what? I don't know where this thing is going. But I know that there are a lot of other people who are interested in this thing. Mm-hmm. So I started to make it evolve, and I started getting into the space where I was creating events. Okay. So I wanted to work with uh, restaurants and breweries because at the time, MLCC license didn't allow restaurants and breweries to co-market a specific event wherever they were. It was illegal for them to do that online. Really? Online. Uh, online. Okay. So social media, which was the space that... I forced myself into to start learning about, which is what what I'm sorry about that. Pretty much uh, <laughs> in line with today. Sure. So, with that said, I was doing things at like Lockhart's Barbecue here in Royal sure. Oak, uh, mm-hmm. doing things with Right Brain Brewery. Uh, we yeah. did this thing called the Pig and Pint, where we did an an eighty pound pig for oh. cheddar. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, uh, with Mangalista Pig Porter paired with that. <laughs> wow! And uh, nice. Steve Coddington, uh, Steve Bubba Coddington, who is one of the owners of Woodpile now mm-hmm. uh, was the pitmaster at uh, at uh, Lockhart's when we when we did that. So um, we were creating these events, uh, and I was able to promote them and be like the middleman to mm-hmm. help you know promote beer. Uh, so from there, it started to evolve. Mm-hmm. Um, MLCC changed, and we were actually able to. They were <laughs> breweries and restaurants and other establishments were mm-hmm. able to promote these events online th- themselves. So I shifted it once more and said, you know what, I'm just going to promote these breweries and what, whatever they're doing. Because okay. obviously I'm not needed for, as a middleman. So, um, yeah, I, then, I, uh, I, I, I don't want to interrupt, but I yeah, just, I, I just want to – it's, it's the perfect example of like how an industry like craft beer continues mm-hmm. to be sustainable, yeah. right? It's, a, it's a, a cottage industry and a business like mine, which is not big, less than 1,000 barrels probably this year – can continue to grow organically and be a sustainable small business mom and pop shop, um, pop and pop, I guess in our pop example. And, <laughs> and 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 when you have other businesses that want to promote what you're doing mm-hmm. and help grow what you're doing, and in yeah. turn create a following for what they do because they're adding value to communities and to industries sure. and whatever. Like that's that's how this thing has been growing organically for the last twenty five years. So it's kind of like you know guys like like Dave, you know, that kind of have that. Um, maybe my guys might be able to help fill in the blanks here. Kind of taking the market like a marketing like yep. yeah, he's ge- a, marketing. He's genius, a storyteller, storyteller yep. like Dave, mm-hmm. and get it out to the masses. It's all about the collaboration, like you talked about. That, whether it it's, goes back to whether yeah. it's brewer to brewer or brewer to marketer or brewer to maltster well, or right. brewer to hop, well, you know hop farmer. Yep. It's, well, it's we all see, a collaboration. We see, yeah, and we've seen that kind of collaboration across. You know, going back to food, we go restaurants, breweries, yeah, we just talking about that. charities, uh, s- distributors, sales, marketing. Yeah. We see yep. we're we're seeing this more and more and more, and it's becoming more common. Some in Michigan, yep. uh, especially in Metro Detroit. Yep. You know, there, there's just so much in the market. There's just, there's the, so many breweries, the so many is, restaurants. Yeah. You know, there's so many different things. 
you know, in the just the tri counties alone. The thing with it is, too, the thing that I learned a lot about early on um, is that there are a lot of the smaller breweries that are just starting that don't have marketing departments. And sure. Basically, I, you know, Dude, I didn't four charge. Years in, I don't have a marketing department yeah. just starting. Yeah. Marketing Dude, department. Your marketing department is one person that <laughs> I, fucking kills Can it. Can you market me, Dave? Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's just Can you like, post hey, man, the book of faces? I want to I want to help. Yeah. Yeah. And no, nobody ever came to me and asked me. Like I reached out to a lot of these people. Like, sure. hey, I want to help you and not charge you any money, but also I'm doing this for fun. So Let's it, do something it, fucking do you, cool. Now, do you do this like? Is this like your your day your, your day job? Or? No, not even close, man. Like, like <laughs> now, not even Come close. So, you, you know what it's like. You, you're yeah, you're in the industry. Yeah, you can't do this well, uh, good for now is uh, I still use it. Uh, okay. You can still go on Instagram and Facebook and see the shit that sure. I post. But it's mainly just uh, adding value to craft beer lovers' lives. Sure, you know what I mean. So it's not I'm not making money off of it at all. That you're doing this because you love the industry. You love yeah, what it's about. Good pour is the only reason why I was able to get into the craft beer industry mm-hmm. as a professional. Uh, okay. You know, working with other breweries and stuff like that. Sure. Working at breweries, uh, freelancing with breweries uh, on on special projects that they have going on. Sure. When uh, asshole uh, vendors decide to steal ninety five thousand dollars from them. Oh, and, oh, oh I just I've uh, just gotten past that in the moment. Thank <laughs> sorry. You. No, no, you're no, welcome. The scab. Ow, I'm bleeding uh, yeah. again. So, uh, <laughs> but it's got to be burns. It burns shit like that precious. has to be brought up, and it's got to be brought to light. Mm-hmm. And breweries like that need the support. The bigger guys, they have. You know, fifteen people. They have a ten fifteen people. person marketing department. Exactly, mm-hmm. that can actually do that stuff, and they're national. And uh, but the the local guys, they, they need a little bit of help. And I was at the time where I was like, I want to know what it's like to create my own business. Okay. Well, and, and the work <laughs> for fun, that, and the work that he's right been on, doing. Man. Like Co- Courtney and I have been like, you know, plugging away. It was me, and then it was me and Courtney. Uh, we're working on this expansion patch, pro- uh, expansion pack project. As a matter of fact, the well, name. Do you want to talk like roll that back a little bit and yeah. before, tell us what before the we talk the expansion? What is this beer that you put oh, out of yeah. the big bottle? You want to you want to <laughs> oh, yeah. get it on this? Everybody yeah. get some? No, yeah. I don't even. Oh. No, what do you guys even have? Oh my god! This one? Yeah, yeah. What? yeah so get every that. once every well, once here, in a while, well, Nick, 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 start with Nick, Nick or something. Nick, let's take this one. I haven't drank out of it, and then I'll take the bottle and pour my my little glass. There we go. What what are we? What am I about to have? Okay, so not this last not not this past not three months ago, but the previous summer. We were fortunate enough to um, uh, win a GABF model uh, medal for a beer that we call Antwerp's Placebo. It's a <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we we uh-huh. it, categorically we refer to it as a, a Belgian dark strong ale, but honestly, it's inspired uh, by Pedro Jimenez Sherry. Like this is inspired by wine, not by beer. Okay. So the goal was to create this beer with deep, dark, dried fruit. Raisin, prune, dates, dates, yeah, oh. um, and 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 syrupy, sweet, but estery, other oh. fruits. So we uh, we made this beer and we made it a few batches of it and really dialed it in and we're in love with it and put it on tap and bottled some and released it. Submitted, won a medal. Super what, what, exciting. Gold. It was a bronze. It was a bronze. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. In this yep. space right now where there are thousands of breweries in the United States, if you're yeah, getting what, a medal, 7, the, the degrees yeah. of separation between a gold and a bronze and considered is fucking nothing. Yeah. So it was. it's good fortune that we were we received I mean, a, a medal. I mean, you're, you're at that point, you're at the mercy of the, of, of the actual single judge. At that as point. well as how, what order the judge consumed your beer in yeah. and what they drank. Drank yesterday, right? It's anyways. We I, I Which appreciate number the opportunity. Of beer they're yeah, on that day, sure. yeah. especially if they're on different flavorings. Like if they're yeah, going what they from, started with earlier that day. If, did if, you drink about if the they coffee? start with pales and now they move totally. to Belgian strongs for that yeah. is that totally. is one thing I don't understand how you can control your taste buds and control your palate after a long. Like I did the World Expo of beer judging and just watching them drink after drink after drink after drink, and I'm like, it's impossibly. Im- unimaginably hard we do sensory at the brewery you know on mondays and we analyze beer and we talk about it and that's at the end of the day where Mm -hmm. we've been pulling tank samples and we've been drinking coffee and we've been doing whatever we do through the day eat our lunch and then we sit down and we have to analyze beer we have to figure out how to reboot drink some water you know eat something plain a potato chip or something yeah that's the first thing you guys got when you first got here was potato chips I, i went to the 
first of all, I haven't eaten much today. I've been remodeling <laughs> yeah, a house. <laughs> and, I, and I knew that we were going to be drinking. By the way, this beer is 15.4% ABV. Well, it's it just, meet, I, well, it meets the minimum requirement on yeah. this show. I, I, so I knew we were going to be digging little, into some, uh, some stuff. So I, I wanted to you know lay down a little bit of foundation. Definitely dates on this one. It, so actually, this beer uh, is not the one that we submitted to the contest. This is one that we just pulled out of port barrels that we aged for a year in port barrels. Oh, shit. So... Uh, every once in a while, we make a beer, and I go like, "Is that the best beer we've ever made?" And I'm, I'm, I really like consider. Yeah, it's this usually, is I mean, so this awesome. is a very <laughs> this very, beer is. I mean, it's deep. I, I was thinking about cracking open a Black Tuesday tomorrow, and I'm just like. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really gonna like it now. <laughs> yeah, that was wow. this. So, oh yeah, I, I definitely tank. taste. I taste this earth. I smell the sweetness. I smell the booze. I, I get the taste. You get the port, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah. am. In a, like, I, I get the port too. It, yeah. Do you remember? I mean, it's. I don't mean this in the bad way at all. I don't mean this in the bad way at all. It's like if you t- you remember like in the nineties when you go trick or treating and you go those box of raisins. Yeah. yeah, I feel like if I ate all those box of raisins that were like covered mm-hmm. in brandy. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting. Nothing what you said was bad. I was about to say nothing that you said. I do bad. not interpret that as bad one bit. I guess I'm just trying to like build a like this is my taste profile in the audio medium. That Child we have. me would say that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Adult me would say pour me another one. Yeah. Well. The, find some more those small boxes. <laughs> right. Yeah, where are those boxes? <laughs> right. I, get, I get that one. Um, so the amazing part is all those fruit po- profiles that uh, you're, you're per- we're perceiving this beer, this is all malt or barrel-based or fermentation-based, right? So there's no fruit in this beer. We did a previous version where we actually had raisins and dates and prunes in the beer. We did not do this in this beer. So – um, that this beer is inspired Just by a, a wine. A, yeah. it, 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 we're, I'm really pumped about how this this turned out. Um, we will actually be releasing this beer in March. We'll do a bottle release of this in March, and um, we're as a part of the expansion pack, you get first dibs on bottle releases. So if you know the almost 400 subscribers all say, "Yeah, I'd like to buy three bottles," is all going to be gone. So yeah. we're going to talk about the expansion pack, but we're going to take a quick break real quick, and we'll be back with the Better on Draft podcast. And we are back. Episode number 157, Better on Draft podcast. Still with us, Dave from Good Poor, Stephen from Batch Brewing Company, as well as many other things. We'll get to that in just a minute. But the expansion pack. So um, let's not rip off the Band-Aid. Let's, let's put some Neosporin back on. And, uh, and oh, I should probably unmute everyone. Yeah, there you go. That's probably idea. a really good idea. <laughs> it feels better. The band, I was talking about the, the Neosporin and the Band-Aid. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So what is Sorry. the expansion pack? How do you get it? What do you get from it? What What is it? Why is it? Why? Where is it? Why? Uh, so, why. yeah, we, we, you know, every brewery that's got some sort of aspirational thing is trying to grow, and we are no exception. We took out a uh, loan, purchased another building as well as some equipment, and one of the items that we were trying to purchase was a packaging line. We put a $95,000 deposit down on this packaging line. This was this amazing packaging line, really multifunction, uh, kind of Swiss army knife, many solutions, one machine. And that company went out of business with our $95,000 deposit. Now, the loan that I took out was about $1.1 million. So we're talking about 10% of a loan that's now gone. And that's the equivalent of the money that we were going to need in order to open the second tasting room in the funk room uh, on East Graham Boulevard. So the building is functional. The plumbing is installed. The We're fermenting beer. We're fermenting cider. Our, we purchased a canning line. We are canning beer. Um, but we the money that was lost in this transaction is no longer available to us uh, to get the second tasting room and small kitchen up and running. So uh, we had to figure out a creative solution, right? I mean, when you're a small business owner, a lot of what you're doing is perpetually figuring out how to make lemonade, right? You got this (laughs) fucked up situation. How do I make this thing happen? (laughs) So I was like, all right, well, what is the problem? The problem is we're trying to open a second tap room. The problem beyond that is we don't have the resources to do it. How do we do that? All right. 
let's create a subscription service. And we're talking about how we do this. We are trying to expand. Right now, and then we're putting on our marketing hats, me and Dave just darken out over here. It's just tuck in. Um, <laughs> that's where I come from professionally. I, I mean, aside from being a hobbyist home brewer, professionally I was a beverage marketer. I worked for some Coca-Cola brands, Vitamin Water, and some other brands. And anyways. Were you doing that sign uh, 50 cents? Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I did. <laughs> Which is why we're sitting in this fucking room yeah. together. There it is. I love you. Um, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I, I really, no, that's Rohan Oza. If you ever watch oh, yeah, Shark, Shark Tank. Tank yeah. yeah, that was my boss's Pop. boss. We used to bust each other's balls in meetings. And now he's on Shark Tank and we're sitting in this room. <laughs> well, we love you I'm too. not busting on your balls. I'm just saying somebody's winning Compared and somebody is, you know, sitting in this room. Um, no. He's got to suit the, the, the exact, exact same cost of his building. Oh, for <laughs> Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, we're not going to get into the, the fashion thing. That was actually Fuck part of our dynamic together. Whatever you can't tell by the hoodies and the ponytail now, but uh, regardless, <laughs> um, no, we we, uh, we we asked that question like how do we how do we fix this problem and how do we turn it into a story that we can tell. And we had a little brainstorm in the fucking closet of an office. We have a batch burning company. It was, and the uh, – it, it, you, so yeah, please, you do it. It was so uh, – so we're sitting there, and he's like, he's like, how? Like, we know what we want to do. Here's what we want to do. We want a subscription package. But we don't know how to package that up and present it to the people. And he's like, so you thought a, a Facebook video would work? He's like, he's like, I don't know. Yeah, well, that came after. <laughs> that came after. And uh, he was like, uh, he's like, we're expanding, you know, we're we're selling these like four packs of beer. He's like, it's like a fucking expansion pack. And he was like, that's the name. And that was it. And then it, we ran from there and said, we're gonna go back to the original video. We're gonna do a video, <laughs> which is where we come from. We went through this crowdfunding. <laughs> yeah. this fucking. We're going video. back to the video of Steven in a smoking jacket with the green screen behind him. And oh, the, I'm wearing an indie- ascot too. Let's not forget the uh, fucking let's, ascot. Let's not forget right, the ascot and his uh, water boots. His, yeah, uh, my maroon boots, my rubber rubber boots. That was it. Galoshes. So, uh, Galoshes. sad part was we couldn't get back to that exact thing because he was in the middle of a move. Smoking jacket is packed away somewhere. Sure yeah, we, sh- shitter's full. <laughs> shitter's Mark. full, and uh, we need to figure See, out what we're gonna that do. That would have worked. Luckily, uh, there's some space next to the new space. Yeah, uh, eight full creative. High five. I go. actually just sold Nick a house today. There, there you go. go. Really? There you go. Where? Yeah, 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 there there you go. Uh, no, we we uh, Jefferson Chalmers. Jefferson Chalmers. He's yeah. moving over next to yeah. yeah. Full mm-hmm. circle. There you go. Nick, love you. Hey, oh, there you shout go. Shout out yep. Nick. Hell yeah. So we go over to Nick's space, and uh, we're we're there, and um, and, and we decide that. We decide that we're going to uh, basically do a couple takes of this video. Well, we we did three, three takes of that video. By the way, three <laughs> take. That's not bad. That's not bad. And we tried it. We tried to turn turn a minute and a half script into a thirty second video so it fit on Instagram. So yeah, I we adjusted really on the quickly. spot. We got what we needed, and we put it out there for the people. And uh, you know, not to like downplay how it was put out there, but uh, you know, Stephen and Courtney and Jason, they 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 all thought about how they wanted to present this to the people and said, you know what, what is going to get them the most value as well as we need to get this thing up and going. So it's a, it's a that fucking, was the goal. It's a, it's a classic small business story. Yeah, man. Like how do we do something creative and how do we do something with no resources and how do we do something that's going to be meaningful and how do we, how do we, how do we, and you're lucky enough to have somebody like Dave that has uh, knowledge and talent in a space so we can figure out – how to make lemonade, right? We got this fucked up situation, and how do we make it better? And uh, we did a funny video. I wrote a script. We made it funnier. Jason clearly made it funnier. <laughs> Courtney made it more awkward. And we uh, we made a video, and it was fun. Great. Yeah. Did you have any other ideas? Or was this like our one shot, one opportunity? Well, I... I I mean, yeah. uh, as far as from like I a... I see exactly where you went there, <laughs> and fuck you, Matt. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this references something previously. Eight Mile, he decided, yeah, he decided eight mile to make an Eminem. Eight Mile reference, oh. which was ridiculous. Okay. Lose yourself. Go, go eat your mouth spaghetti. Or did you lose your... Jesus. Mouth spaghetti. <laughs> I'll your sweater. All over your sweater. All over your sweater. Oh man, that's rough. That's gonna that's gonna leave a stain. So, Dave, what are you uh, what are you Just cracking? Mark so, um, this is by far. One of my favorite batch brewing company beers, recently canned for the f- first, first time, time ever. Uh, 
the label done by Detroit graffiti artist Shades. If you guys can see that right there. <laughs> that mm-hmm. is an homage to a couple of things, right? Wild Style. Anybody know Wild Style? Oh, yeah. The Wild style. 80s hip hop b boy aerosol, you know, lifestyle movie from New York, and which little, then turned into a, a, l- a logo. That's right, for the, the Tribe <laughs> Called Quest. We originally, this beer had a different name for about a week. Low end, low end Theory used to be called I know what this uh, like. Midnight Marauder because <laughs> yeah. why wouldn't you? And then we discovered that there were a couple of beers named Midnight Marauder. So Jason and I sat down, the tribe, you know, dorks that we are. And he was like, dude, Lauren Theory, let's just name it after the greatest fucking tribe record of all time. And that's what we did. It's an homage to one of the most important hip hop groups that's yeah, ever man. been. And Amen, uh, one of the most important hip hop, you yet? know, cultural. What's that? Did we say what it was yet? So we used to call it a black IPA until mm-hmm. the reality is that um, most people perceive <laughs> black IPAs as they're they're thin bodied, right? They're just like kind of one dimensional. It's roasty and watery and hoppy. It's like grain astringent bitter and hot bitter, and that's it. And that's it's not what delicious. that's yeah, not what this beer is, right? This so we hearken back to kind of where the style came from, Cascadian Dark Ale, West Coast. It is. It's like a hoppy brown. Yeah, it man. is it's, caramely, and mm-hmm. it is round, yeah. and it's syrupy, and it is hoppy, and the bitterness is balanced by the sweetness. It's it's resinous, and it's piney, and it's dank, and it's fucking red. And this if is one of the, ha- yeah. If somebody handed you this glass and and while your eyes were closed and said, "Take a whiff of this," and you smelled it and then said, "Now open your eyes," yeah. you would not see what was in your in your glass. Now, no, do you? No way. Do you think that uh, deception is new or key in craft beer? Because um, one of the breweries that Rob and I like is Eastern Market, and they do a lot of these white stouts or these coffee blondes. You know, beers that you think should look or taste a different way are completely flipped on their head. So is that – do you think that's like a new trend that you guys, as the brewers, are trying to like be like, hey, try it differently or or reconsider your your – preconceived notions well so, so we were just having this conversation during the break where we were talking about uh perception right and expectation and in order to surprise somebody if you would like people to get excited about something you need to exceed their expectation in order to exceed their expectation you need to surprise them because in craft beer right now there are a nearly infinite number of styles or versions of styles People's expectation for experience in beer is incredibly fucking high. But don't you think that's it's not deception. Exper- experience in everything, though. Don't you think that like we're now at a point, and maybe it's our generation or our our culture where our whole thought of life is an experience more than like material, like it used to be. In maybe the nineties and eighties. Now we're chasing our dollars for that experience instead. Well, like I would I would say this and and Sorry back me up here. No, 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 no. Let's no, please, go for let's, it. let's dig in. Let's, let's, let's get meta metaphysical. Let's, yeah, let's talk metaphysical. <laughs> um, this is this is the thing. The world has gotten smaller. People have access to more knowledge, yeah. more information than they ever have and that has everything to do with the digital revolution. We've gone through, you know, a small number of significant revolutions as a fucking species. You want to get philosophical, let's do it. The most <laughs> recent uh, revolution that we have gone through knowledge wise, knowledge base is this digital revolution and the in- access to information and beyond information, not to, you know, dig a shitty hole, but opinion that could be perceived as information, but is just some asshole's opinion is out there for about. us to wade through <laughs> as yeah. we perceive yeah. our own reality. Whether that's beer or politics, we have to fight through this fucking noise. I'm going to challenge you there. Uh-huh. I don't think the revolution we have is. Information. I think the revolution we have is connectivity, which leads to the opinion versus fact culture because we're no longer getting information. We're getting connected. So well, we're getting other, we're getting our crosswinds. We're playing swords with each other. I, I, it's, a, it's a perfectly reasonable thing to debate whether or not information <laughs> implies truth. Let's smoke is a, joint a completely talk about different this later. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I feel, I feel no, like this, is, this is definitely bong toke department. <laughs> I feel like I'm on an episode of Meet the Press or something. It also goes beyond the fact Good, that. Good, then we're doing it right. <laughs> there we go. It, it's not beyond the fact I'm that people Chris don't Wallace. want to go deeper. 
Also, that's what she said. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. God, uh, so <laughs> he did it. Uh, <laughs> you, you see what you did? did. You had did Ken it. take his uh, headphones off. I had to, jerk. Uh, we get so deep, we gotta like, we gotta like break it up. People Levity. don't. Be, people don't want to go deeper, right? Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so Peter. I'll say it. When you need, should I say it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to get more information. You know, they whatever's put in front of them, whether it's digital or not, that's what they're going to take most of the time. That's face value. Unless there's somebody like Matt Bush who decides that he <laughs> wants to get philosophical <laughs> and better on draft podcast uh, on, <laughs> the, on a Friday. Usually we go off the road like taking fart no, no. jokes. Now it's no, just, no, this is totally like, reasonable. Like, this is great. People this is, generally this is great, want just enough information to validate, to, themselves. To validate their preconceived yeah. opinion. Right. Too so, yeah, yeah. And, that, like, and that's the same that thing in beards, same thing in politics, same thing in the rest of the fucking nonsense. And you know what? For the most part, it's okay sometimes to, you know, take a break from having to think so hard. Right. And just drink a fucking beer. Yeah. That's what I do every Friday night. That's the th- <laughs> Between 7 and 9, right? Can I just say, that's the thing that is missing from craft beer and politics that <laughs> used to exist. Anybody a homebrewer here? Occasionally. Yeah, like, uh, not anybody, yet. I have anybody, not, anybody, not talk to me when I get a bigger house. And like, there you go. <laughs> I get talk talk to me when I sell him a bigger house. There you go. <laughs> uh, anybody know the phrase, don't worry, have a homebrew? Yes. Yeah, it's in the book. It's exactly. It's in the book. It is. That, that, that. <laughs> Sentiment does not exist in the way that people drink and enjoy craft beer. It's always no, up against a fucking benchmark. It's up against an untapped it's like, rating. It's, it's, it's almost up, it's almost like a competition almost. And it's not a competition between breweries anymore. There you go. It's no, a competition no, no, you're between right. consumers. Yes. You're right. I, a I fucked up thing. I, I could not agree any more than what I, you than that. We, yeah. we I agree. We have people who just have arguments on Facebook groups and untapped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Ab- ab- and beer Here's advocate a, about ratings on ab- beer. Ra- ratings. I mean, what kind of hops they should use right. in the beer? Oh, I think you should I, use I this. Mean, that line is basically in every paragraph. Yeah, man. Every, that damn it's every book. set, almost every sentence. <laughs> it's yeah. Don't worry about it. Just and I don't so. Even have to, and, I don't, and I don't even have to read it. Well, let's yeah. bring, yeah. let's bring this yeah. back a little bit. Let's bring this back a little bit because we can go on and on about craft beer culture, and maybe we'll do that for segment three. Let's kind of go back because there's you know as much as you do with batch brewing, that's not the only thing you do within the community of Metro Detroit and Michigan beer. And let's let's go to the next step. And you, there's there's actually like a hat that I could pull different things out of because there's so many things you do. I don't know where you have time to sleep. Uh, but let's talk about the feel good tap. Sure. Uh, as a part of our my our uh, business planning process, um, especially in the context of winning hatch and getting some free money in Old Tiger Stadium, you know, grant and getting some money and crowdfunding campaign and getting some money. Start to realize, like, and we for a lot of years we've been like, root for us. We're the little brewery that could, you know. Right. And you you start to reflect on that and ask yourself the question, like, we've gotten a lot of we got a lot of support. We have a responsibility to pay this not only back but pay it forward to this broader community that we are a part of. Right. Um, Additionally, inspired by individuals in our families, Jason's father uh, is living with Alzheimer's. My mother is living mm. with multiple sclerosis. Um, we felt it important that we included in our, our in our our business and our in in the DNA of who we operate as mm-hmm. um, a way to give back to the community that we more broadly started to refer to as altruistic capitalism. Like, we're capitalists. We create jobs. We create tax revenue. We are trying to grow, and we're certainly trying to fucking get paid one of these days. In the meantime, <laughs> while we're doing... Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> would, could somebody please fucking pay me? Pick up In the tab, meantime, please. Yeah, it, if somebody has <laughs> got, you know, like a couple of dollars... That'd be awesome. Anyways, um, in a, in addition to growing a business and trying to make it, you know, profitable and successful, and buy a boat, uh, we've also <laughs> we we we've also asked ourselves this ongoing question: like, how do we add more value to the community that we're a part of? Mm-hmm. And the Feel Good Tap is the first place, and we continue to do that. Uh, the Feel Good Tap is a simple concept: you pick a beer out of what you have on tap. You raise the price by a dollar. And then at the end of the month, after all those beers are purchased, you take those dollars and then you deploy them to a different nonprofit. So, I mean, to be oh, completely honest, cool. you guys are doing the giving. Now, we do a little bit different at Batch. We do $2. You give one. We give one. But 
as we took this idea and we grew it based on feedback, we turned it into a 501c3. The Feel Good Tap is a separate organization. Um, as other organizations participate, there are about 40 different breweries and beer bars and restaurants that participate. Um, that's what they do. They pick a beer. They raise a price by a dollar. They do plenty of promotion. Mm -hmm. They operate the logistics of sending us a check. They train their teams. They hang out posters. They do their thing. They put it on social media. They got skin in the game. They're also raising the price of a beer by a dollar, which might push somebody towards put, purchasing another beer or not. They've got skin in the game. You guys are doing the actual cash contribution. They are the mechanism for it. And then we collaborate together to figure out where that money is going. So uh, this year we'll probably raise about $130,000. No shit. Yeah. We're, Damn, in the last we're three years, we're <laughs> sniffing around maybe three, between, almost four. Between almost four. four. Between 40 breweries, you know, or just you and, guys. and restaurants Location. and beer bars. So uh, Hopcat is incredibly important. Okay. You know, Old Nation has come on the last couple of years, incredibly important. Uh, a lot of the breweries out in the Milford area, River's Edge, Drafting Table. I mean, there's there's a lot of partners that are uh, participating mm. and are engaged. And the reality there's, is... There's actually a really good partner that you have called North Center Brewing over in North Glen, oh, Michigan. No, no, North Center Brewing, is, they're, they're doing a great job. Just south of Baseline Road over on North Center Road. You can go check them out. Ultraviolet, the alt beer that I brewed last year, is coming back this is year in this one time? week. Go it's fuck like yourself. <laughs> Damn, yeah. tough fucking crowd. Uh, hold on, hold on. Speaking you're, of tough crowd, do you guys want to try an old beer? You are, you are on. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, mute, you're muted, Matt, for that comment. Wow. And, the and, fuck and, out of here! Where's my phone, asshole? You ain't getting on my microphone. Speaking Steal of, like, um, I haven't, I haven't heard any, any uh, reactions to uh, low in theory, which uh, I do have to comment that. I, I, I low haven't in had theory, a sip yet. Low in theory was the very first batch beer I'd ever had. Bingo. Wow. Because it was actually they when they had bottles at eight degrees Detroit back in the day when you guys had uh, oh light, hand wrote that shit. Had the hand <laughs> yeah, man. Them, and I saw it there, and I just said, Ooh. tribe reference, bought. <laughs> do, it, I, do it now. I, I don't feel like I see enough black IPAs. So it's, you, and it's because it's a of style. perception of, right? right? People expect it to be kind of thin and watery, grain astringent roasty, mm -hmm. and bitter. And astringent so good. and bitter Scary together good. are a tough oh. combination of, of complementary <laughs> or not flavors. Do you know this one? No, it's going to kick my ass. That you though. just poured? Uh, I read I read Better I read Together. Buffalo I, Trace I, Better Together. I, this is uh I, I do know this one. <laughs> this Buffalo is Trace. The, this is yeah. the rarest yeah. of the rare shit. Yeah, man. Of, um, notice more. the dust. Yeah. This is the rarest of the rare. Your finger oh, we are the dust top of the yeah, there yes. Like I said, there there's a few that I've had. I've oh. I've had pretty much the oh, low in theory, better together, the pog and I just call um, this because I had friends who were yeah. in roller derby. Um, oh, had oh yeah, the hey, yeah. Yep. and and uh, shout out to to Sham Wow out there who's Sham Wow. Uh, she's the quicker picker up her. <laughs> she's hard. No, she's hardcore. Yeah. Sham Wow doesn't fuck around. Yeah. I, I I really. The season's about to kick back off, right? Like, did it didn't start yet, right? Did, I'm did, not sure. Did try derby it's, girls. It's close. Dude, Derby Girls are as rad as fuck. I, I, You've never been? No. Oh, I, I, they've been around, I've been wanting to go for the last this, few years. This, 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 this is a classic example no, of what has been on going actually, on in Detroit. No, wait, hold on. Ken, Ken and I actually know huh? someone that used to be on Detroit Derby Girls. We do. Detroit yeah. Diva. Was it Detroit Divas? No, it was yeah. Detroit, Detroit be, no. Uh, Draft Divas. Is there we go. Yeah. I thought they so, were Derby Girls, though, too. That's what I need. The Detroit, Detroit, Detroit Draft Divas are not Derby Girls. Exactly. No, those are different things, although I'd pay money for that ticket. I'd love it. I mean, could you have Todd Parker in the front? Being like the the head of the Detroit Draft Divas because he's in every single goddamn Divas picture too. If you've been if you've been to uh, roller derby, uh, Todd would have to be one of the referees in the stripes. He'd fair, be, he'd, fair. He'd be wearing some like really Hot like pants? jorts. They're Hot they're pants. jorts. They're jorts. like they're they're Are like they like acid wash jorts that that he cut off. Oh, himself? They're, they're Daisy Duke homemade acid wash <laughs> jorts. Still with the rocks in <laughs> like pockets? one testicle hanging yeah. out. <laughs> You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've been there. It's not no. The testicle's not quite hanging out. It's the hair that you see below it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like that, 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 I, I guess that I I I'm <laughs> laughing. Like a the nut beard. The second Mer part is the fact that we Your love. Girlfriend's like, can I buy you a razor? We love uh, <laughs> Todd Parker over here. He's a great fan little of the guy, show. Right? What's that? Little guy. Little Todd Parker is not a little guy. That's the name of his new brewery, <laughs> though. Oh, yeah, Little Guy yeah, Brewery. Show, little Guy Brewing. Fair, fair. You want yes. this little guy. Yeah. Shout out. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad like, I could bring that home for you, though. Thank I, you. I, thank I you. do what I can. I'm just here to... I'm, I'm like, like, I'm like Todd Parker. I thought he said the little guy. And I'm like, what? No. No, no. 
no, no, no. You're thinking no, the wrong. Todd's, Todd Todd's taller than me. Yeah, I know. But okay, okay. okay. Can you tell us what we just poured in our faces? Yeah, yeah man. So this is Buffalo a, Trays. Uh, this is a 2016 uh, Buffalo Trays Better Together. This is a beer that we did in collaboration with Slows. Uh, brewing company, uh, they purchased a barrel of Buffalo Trace and had all of the liquid bottled, and they sold it in their in their bar. And when you buy an entire barrel, you get the actual barrel, which we just received the second barrel, the second time they've done a, a barrel purchase, which we are putting our first Dick Smasher variant Ooh, look into. Out. Oh, yeah, look we're doing out. A, we're doing a beer called. Is it a Buffalo uh, Dick Smasher? It is actually called. It's called a uh, Dessert Smasher. <laughs> Okay. It has got uh, cocoa nibs, and it has got uh, Madagascar vanilla, and it's got a little bit of lactose, and a little bit more caramel malt, sweeter, curvier, a little more syrupy, chocolate and vanilla, um, and then uh, it's going oh. to see some barrel treatment. That's going to be a nice. lot of fun. What's like this? So what's the ABV on Oh, I'm this? sorry. That's only be expa- uh, available yeah, in the expansion you, thank pack. You. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, welcome. that's the March. <laughs> that is the March. So if you want to try it, you're going to have to subscribe. That, that is, that, yeah, that, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm just here can... fucking slinging hard. <laughs> like, just tuck in. I'm selling shit. I guess that, that was going to be the question. Was long. that can people still subscribe? No, absolutely. Oh, yeah. They can actually subscribe until uh, the end of January. It's 120 bucks for the year, and you get a four pack of beer. Every month, those beers are only available to subscribers. And in addition to that, you have you get some other cool shit. You get the ability to pre-purchase other uh, releases before the public. So when we release one year Port Barrel Age and Torps Placebo, if you're a subscriber and you want to buy that beer, you can pre-purchase it. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to show up until you fucking whatever. You purchase it. It's done. <laughs> and then you show up on a Wednesday. You're like, oh, can I get that Antwerps and can I get a po'boy, please? Like, here you go. Right. So we have a lot of have people. go that that Costco membership for next year. That's what I'm talking we have, about. We have fans yeah. outside of Michigan. Is this only going to be a Michigan situation? So it is illegal to ship beer in the state of Michigan. So uh, most of our You're going to beer... go down to Toledo and ship it from there? <laughs> no. Find a UPS no, store? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking do Here's that. Here's what you need to Kinda, do. You need to you need what, to find your friend. You, that friend needs to buy it, and then you need to figure out a way yourself to get it down to that friend. Got it. Yeah, yeah. that's a team player move. You know be a team you got pl- Toledo. You got some Toledo friends. Player. It's not that far away. No, you go I don't, down, I don't go down tacos, drop off some beer. You just gonna mule some beer across the border. Yeah. Chick fil A. Yeah, but do you? Well, yeah. nine. That's yes. Musa. That I was like nine, nine. Cousin Deutsch back in the nine. Oh, here we go. Nine. Yeah, bull. So I mean, as far as the subscription, I mean, how are the subscriptions going? Uh, they're going well. So we our original goal was 300 subscriptions. It was about the equivalent of a seven barrel batch. Um, 350 is a seven barrel batch, but leave ourselves a little bit of room for error. You know, a packaging line, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And we achieved that number before we even got to December. So we rolled nice. the dice. You got you know when you own a brewery, Thank you've you. got some. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, people. Thank you. No, it's it's inc- it's in, it's incredible that you we would have that much support, right? That yeah, much yeah. enthusiasm about something like this, and it's not a small investment. I mean, 120 bucks out of pocket, plunk. It's one thing to buy a four pack every month and spend 100, you know, 120 dollars over the year, but to drop 120 bucks in one thing, it's not yeah, a right. it's not a small commitment to a thing. Right. Um, so we decided that we would roll the dice and double it and do a dedicated 15-barrel batch of beer every month for the subscription, for the expansion pack. And the the second 300 of <laughs> you know subscriptions are going to be harder to sell than the first 300. So we're yeah. at about 400 right now. We've got 200 more to sell by Feb 1. Okay. Call on me. Can, yeah, yeah. can I, can hey, I put her in a request for yeah. a summer beer? Can I get a ginger lime Berliner Weiss, like a Moscow Mule Berliner Weiss? Mule. Berliner Weiss. Not in the expansion pack, but I'll see what I can do. Well, you just said like you're looking for a new barrel to make every month, right? It's so not, a, it's not necessarily a, a barrel. Yeah, but uh, but it's it's a it's a it's, so it's a, a a different fifteen barrel batch, a different quantity, like oh yes. yeah, not, not necessarily barrel aged. Fifty gallons of beer we're making every month. Yeah, yeah. but can I get a, a ginger <laughs> lime Berliner Weiss in that? Sounds like we should get you home, Brent. You got a really specific need. <laughs> right. We're well, no, just. <laughs> I've been I don't know why you're looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, we're look, looking no, no. directly at you. I've been fighting for more Berliner Weisses in the world yeah, man. For, for years. Dude, I, 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 I am totally down with the idea of a beer, as a matter of fact. Like, you guys next crushed week, it with the Fagoza. 
Yeah. It was literally the, the best thing I put in my mouth for that for that entire weekend. Uh, best thing. <laughs> almost. Yeah, best almost. Thing. <laughs> best thing. Don't, don't swing at it. Don't swing the at best. it. Don't <laughs> swing at it. Don't, don't no. go too far there. No. Man. Don't so, go chase some water. The, no, so I, <laughs> exactly. We, we, so exactly. I think next week we're actually going to launch a contest. Of the 12 beers that we're brewing for the expansion pack, we have 11 decided. And we have one that we are going to make. A consumer suggestion, and if we pick your suggestion and your name, Matt. then you are going to get a free expansion pack for the year. Look at Damn. that! Look yeah. at that! Hey, did you hear? Did you hear uh, that? I, I have he just, can't hear anything. <laughs> he's just like a ginger, <laughs> ginger line. Me he's like just Berliner Ice. Yeah. Now your microphone's Berliner really, really uh, low already. All right, good. <laughs> it's like you've been drinking before you got here. Uh, believe it or not, I wasn't. Although I feel like I should have maybe to loosen me up for my job area. You know, we yeah. talked uh, we talked about uh, Fagoza, um, and that was part of the Detroit beer experiment. Yeah, which is another thing that you do. <laughs> yeah, Weird. we You're do like that. The jack of all he's trades. got he's got these master things. Master of none. Never stop. No, I, I'm a master <laughs> no. of some trades, but Can't I tell you what, it's not tile. I've been working on a new bathroom. I'm not a tile master. You can tell by the amount of thinset in my fingernails. Um, I mean, tile master does sound like a decent name for a new beer. I, uh, there it is. Well, yeah. uh, let's put that up. Let's let's put that in the white expansion pack and see if IPA mil- white I- white milkshake IPA. What? It's all it's white. Uh, gro- white it looks like mil- it would look like that. It's got it's thin set. Well, let's call it thin set. Thin set. We had a building. Oh, we're gonna call it's it called thin set. Thin set. Dip set. So the Detroit Beer Experiment is a collaborative thing. Michigan has got this incredible fucking beer environment right it's it's breadth and it's depth what happens in beer in the state is really it's parallel by what california oregon colorado like Vermont. that's it Vermont. Yeah. not really yeah. no no not really. are we still top five we're still top five in regards to it, it, breweries by population population right. per capita yeah. but it, beyond, beyond that like just the the creativity and the longevity of the beer Community and the beer scene in the state of Michigan, like it's yeah. this is a significant. It's a it's a watershed beer community, and it's been really uh, organized for a really long time. The Michigan Brewers Guild has acted as a model for other brewers guilds across the country. What we do here is special. We're very batch brewing company is very new to this community. We're really really happy and proud to be a part of it. Um, the the reality is I have no fucking idea what I was just talking about. Be Detroit Beer Experiment. Thank you very much. So <laughs> in the state of Michigan, there's this really deep, you know, beer community. Detroit has been struggling with its reality for the last years. Parallel to the, the 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 you know the arc of craft beer in the state of Michigan, right? Right. And you look at what's been happening in in western Michigan, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, and this really amazing uh, you know, innovation in craft beer in that part of the state. Meanwhile, there's no money or no people investing money into the city of Detroit. Right. The idea of the Detroit Beer Experiment was how can we take these longer-term participants, Detroit Beer Company. Motor City. Motor City. Atwater. Atwater. Traffic Jam and Snug. Everybody Detroit that... Beer Company. Detroit Beer Company. The people that have been participating in this fledgling craft beer community in this tough and economic environment in the city of Detroit and do something to celebrate our community, our brotherhood, our collaborative nature. We're all friends with each other. When we get together and drink, we do that with some serious fucking Gusto. deliberate. Yeah, it's no joke. <laughs> that shit is no There's joke. a purpose behind it. We lace them up tight. And um, when we, you know, we have the Detroit Fall Beer Festival at Eastern Market, to be able to two months out, plan a collaboration, get in the same room, and say like, "What kind of you know silly shit do we want to do for this festival?" Right. And how do we want to tell a story about it? And how does that highlight what we're doing in Detroit? And how does that highlight how we organize ourselves as a community? As a community, right? Uh, is is super fun. So the the Detroit beer experiment has existed for four years. Uh, the name, by the way, is an homage to a record called the Detroit uh, the Detroit Experiment, which was a record. Uh, that was uh, a fusion of techno and jazz and funk. What? Um, the Detroit Experiment? Oh, Detroit, man. The Detroit Experiment. Jazz? The Detroit Experiment. 
Uh, the, the, Kyle the, Craig's thing. Carl Craig. It was the, it was the uh, also the the late great uh, Marcus Belgrave on trumpet, who was a, a jazz instructor at, at uh, Wayne State University. It was some really important musicians doing something innovative. This community of people coming together and doing this thing. So that that name is a is a, a nod to an existing history in Detroit. We're doing this in beer, um, but more broadly, this. This community continues to grow. So you look at people like Bure Faison who are making great progress in getting their space built out to open in uh, uh, Island View or uh, yes. Black Bottom Brewing Company. And they have secured a space and they've got renderings and they're working to get their doors open. How do we as a community continue to grow awareness of who we are and what we do in beverage? So we're actually working on another project. I have another hat over here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you ready for it? Ready for it. Yeah, this is a big hit. Um, we're working on a project called the Detroit Craft Beverage Guild. It is a separate <laughs> beverage guild. Yep. Hi. The, yeah, listen the, up. Yeah, no, seriously. The, the <laughs> bylaws are written, and Uh-oh. they are approved, so we're going to be filing for it very soon. And the idea is this is a beverage guild that's not just craft beer. Beverage. I was going to say beverage, which beverage. seems to include mead. It is mead, it is wine, it is cider, it is, spirits? it is spirits, and it's more Uh-oh. broad than that. How do we think about what we make in this re- – by the way, I've never said this shit out loud. We're doing this on your show. That's yeah. spont- uh, spontaneous. Amy like is- Sherman is going to be pissed as first. fuck. Better on draft um, exclusive. Seriously. Um, where is that button? <laughs> we're, yeah, where's Push the, the button? button. Yeah. Yeah. How, do, how, do, how, do we think about, how do we think about what we do regionally from a creativity standpoint and mm-hmm. promote – that regionally to continue to drive awareness and traffic and and tourism and enthusiasm about a region and about a, a collaborative spirit like this is a way for us to do something in addition to what the Michigan Brewers Guild does. Michigan Brewers Guild does this very finite thing. Yeah, we're also going to do a finite thing. It's going to be geographic finite, not you know d- beer category finite. It'll be category agnostic. So long as you're yeah. fermenting for alcohol, kombucha, like let's. Let's do some amazing shit and mm-hmm. highlight what we do in this region. So that's the other project. I'm in the next on three to five years, that group is going to be doing some cool shit. So <laughs> before we, we go into our third segment, we take a break. I have a trivia for you. Oh, oh boy. Oh. All right. There we go. So, Dave, you can help if you want. Am I allowed to ask? Or uh, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. Leave, leave it to us trivia host professionals. So oh, wow. along <laughs> with your second site coming up, there are six more breweries or second sites coming to the city of Detroit. Second so, more, six more breweries, breweries or second, or second sites, sites coming to, to the, the city. city of Detroit, the physical city of Detroit, Detroit proper. You've already named some. I named two. Yep. Faison. Faison. Uh, and Black Bottom. Black Bottom. There's uh, four Motor more. Motor City is opening in the Avenue, Avenue of Fashion. Fashion. Yep. yep. So that's number three. Um, that that's the, my, that that's the second. Now it's the second one. I'm I will say, I will say this. My list ended. I, I will say that um, I, I know that Founders owns another building in Detroit. I don't know if they're planning another site. So maybe I should say Craft Beer then. Oh. Oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> All day. And Too soon? Us. Like, new se- uh, like a new second place? Oh, well, that was the only new second place was Motor City. So the rest are brand new breweries opening in the city of so Detroit. So like JP wouldn't count? Uh, JP would not count. Detroit proper? Detroit proper, yes. Um, so former head brewer of DBC is opening one. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Of course. Justin is a great buddy of mine. So I'm, I'm really excited I about it. tell. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a great <laughs> dude. I just... It's been a little while. He's been busy throwing axes and whatnot. It's a lot of um, <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot of tile uh, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, it, it, you have no idea the fumes that I am exposed to with this home remodel. Uh, so, so that's the Rosedale Beer and Bistro. Yep, absolutely. I'm really pumped about those guys. So you said Black Bottom. Yep. Is that five or four? Uh, that's four. Or two more. two more. Yeah, there's two more. Is there? Can give you give a, him clues? Like, like, what air, what air one's going to be a distiller or former or current distillery oh, that's opening oh, up yeah, a brewery? Yeah, no, totally. So that's uh, Detroit City Distillery. They've got a brewer's license. They'll there start you making go. beer. There you go. They participated in the last Detroit what? beer where, where experiment. Where are they going to make beer? Over in the old Stroh building, which was oh, right previously the, street, the yep. um, They have a nice little logo on it. It's right by my apartment. Yeah. Right off of Gratiot. Yep. And then there's one more going up in Island View. 
Uh, you talked about Faison. Oh, we already, Faison. we already said Faison. Oh, oh, it's list. the Bent Rim Lee. There you go. Yeah, totally. You go. Yeah, Sick. for sure. There you go. Right, so there you go. You, you got all of them. I just uh, need some need, nudges. Need, need a little nudges. I but have you been need... drinking 13, 14, 50% alcohol. Well, it, yeah. it was again. Like, I didn't, I didn't say the name. I didn't say mine. At, like, I'm like, eh, you know, here's a little hint. And it's like, oh, it's this one. It's this one. Yeah. There are a lot of breweries coming up in the city. There's a lot of distilleries. Um, and I think there's just so much growth that can't happen because there's so much space that I can't wait to see what the future is. Is. But we are going to take a quick break. Uh, we are going to come back. Uh, maybe do do we have five questions? Um, we we can have five questions, but I think we should go to news. We should go to news. All right, we'll be right back with the news. Uh, if I can actually find the uh, the sand, there we go. With the better on draft podcast, and we are back one fifty seven better on draft podcast, and uh, we still have our guests here. Welcome. We appreciate you staying. You guys are still muted. I did that back to back, two for two. I'll try it again. Hey guys, there we go. Somebody's playing the show on uh, their phone. Yeah. Who needs Thanks, to Matt. Feedback That's now. the second time Matt. you've done that today. No, was, no, 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 first time. <laughs> sure. Jackass. First time today. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you, you have a beer you're cracking open, Mr. David. Yeah, I'll do that. Steven, what, what, do what, I'll your... do this, and you then you okay, do ready. the intro. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we have been known to name a beer or two after some you know Grateful Dead references because Jason and I are Grateful Dead fans, dorks. What you can call us? Aren't what they you like? Deadheads. You could call us that. You could call us other things. Uh, we've both seen uh, a fair number of shows and have spent some time in that happy place. Um, Rainbow Colors Blended is uh, a relatively obscure Grateful Dead reference. Um, and this is uh, the first, like, it's the first real milkshake IPA that we did. It's about, I think, 9%. Let me get the, you get the can. I think it's 9% ABV. It is... 8.9% ABV. Uh, it was 9%. Close. 55 IBUs. 4.0 on the SRM. And the body is juicy. Juicy. By the um, way... Get, can you get a good look at this on yeah, the camera? Oh, oh, you gotta, yeah. Sorry. No, other, no other brewery, brewery does this. This the, is, the yeah. Stats, so. This is, uh, yeah. We're really fortunate to have uh, relationships with uh, people within and a part of our organization that also want to do meaningful things with, you know, their skills, their careers is there uh, rye in this in here? space. There is no rye in here. There is definitely that spice that you're picking up. It's like yeah. a phenolic spice from okay. fermentation. So this is a blend of yeast that includes a, uh, a Belgian as well as a German ale yeast. And they definitely throw some phenols, some like spicy phenols. Yeah. Um, it's a really fun combination of ingredients. This is like it's a really fun beer. The malt profile, the yeast profile, the fruit. Um, and obviously the hop profile. It's aromatic. It's got some great hop flavor. It also has an incredible tropical fruit flavor, not only from the hops, but also from the mango and the passion fruit that are in the beer. Uh, a fun project and one that you know people have gotten excited about. So we've done this beer a couple of times. Uh, we're also going to be doing a deconstruction version of this beer in the expansion pack. So Rainbow Colors Blended, we're going to do three different beers in the expansion pack one that will be uh, Roy, one that will be G, and one that will be Biv. Uh, three different, <laughs> three different dissections of the rainbow color spectrum in the three different beers. Uh, I got to, I got to give a shout out to Ian I was about to say, on shout that out to one. Ian. Not only, not only is the uh, art uh, and the label design something that Ian, uh, Ian, and I have been working on collaboratively for, uh, God two years that we have been working more two and a half three years we've been working on label design together um but i believe he was the idea behind unblending the rainbow colors and we're turning that into three different beers so um ian's a badass and obviously his wife courtney who works for us is a badass and just back to the thing small business with a group of dedicated people we're trying really hard to continue to find them opportunities to grow their skill set their career uh, and you know their influence within our organization to keep growing and doing cool so shit so as grateful dead fans i have yeah. to ask uh-huh. did you go to the grateful dead trivia event at one eyed betty's i did we had beer on tap and like sh- this is what i'm going to say 
We got third place and we lost to a, I swear to fucking God, a Grateful Dead cover band. They are, they live and eat and breathe and drink and shit Grateful Dead all goddamn day long. And they showed up and schooled everyone. Like, there was not a close second. What are their names? Second and third, I don't remember, but they've been around doing their thing. Happy Not Alives. I was going to say the Grateful Bread. Anybody else? The humble not alive. Anybody <laughs> else? Hey, there's two more. There's no. two. I'm just gonna watch. No, right? No, I got. I got the nothing. humble zombies. <laughs> yeah, I got, yes. I got nothing on that. So I want to humble I, zombies. I want to pull it back Angry though. Alive. I want to pull it back to what you were talking about earlier. You said oh, batch is only a thousand barrels. Not even. Not even. Yeah. Do you want to keep it where that is? Do you want? Do you? Do you see a day where you're selling six, twelve? 18 packs in grocery stores or do you just want to stay in your niche your where you are uh i imagine that we will continue to grow uh the plan that i have put together for next year is approximately 1500 barrels it'll boil down to execution it'll boil down to the finicky nature of fermentation um we will be over a thousand barrels next year we'll be really close this year we'll be over next year um, and then based on the funk room and the tap room there and what we sell retail versus into distribution and, you know, the ability to keep generating, generating revenue, uh, I've been working really hard to position us from a real estate standpoint to be able to add on to our building in court town and create additional space to grow our business. Uh, do I have the footprint to grow the brewery in our production? Yeah. What do I think I could grow it to? Easily over 5,000 barrels. Do I want to become the next Bells and the next Founders? Absolutely fucking not. Well, we've had a lot of people on, you know, Liberty Street recently who was in distribution and up, basically ended distribution. So do you, do you want to just keep it to where you're selling out, sending, you know, kegs out and keeping it that simple? Or do you, do you want to have... Your beer at places like Zatuna Liquor in Rochester Hills. We have our beer at Zatuna Liquor in Rochester Hills. So the canning, <laughs> li- the, can- the, 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 the reason we have a canning line is to be able to put our beer out in a different format into a different retail outlet. Uh, we absolutely put beer out in draft, and we're on three. We'll be on four, I think. Uh, Hopcat Local 30s. We... Have beer out in draft. We have beer out in cans. Our distribution space right now is basically I-94 to I-96 coast to coast. That's basically Detroit Metro, Lansing, Ann Arbor, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids. Do we have the opportunity to go north? Absolutely. Do we have the opportunity to go south? 100%. Um, It boils down to doing this in a meaningful way. In craft beer, margins are tight. In restaurant, margins are tight. I have a responsibility to operate a business that I can continue to pay and advance the careers of my employees. Whether or not Altruism that is... Altruism as, as it, a whole. Yeah. It, 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 I didn't start this business with the intent primarily of being an employer. I started it with the intent of making more beer. And in the process, you realize that you are responsible for the longevity and the health of families' incomes. And so you start to look at what you do as a business owner in a different lens. How do I make sure that what I'm doing is meaningful to our beer industry, to the restaurant industry, and to the employees that I have? That the business that we're doing is sustainable, but also inspired and something that, you know, we're proud of. So the the short story long, the amount of beer that we make isn't the important part. The impact of the beer is people being inspired by it and how much money the business is able to generate for the beer that we sell. We make more money selling a glass at a time across a bar than we do selling a four pack, you know, with Ashley at Holiday. We have a responsibility to be, he's my dude. I've known him since he was a <laughs> Sir yeah. Ashley. Um, we, 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 uh, we have to operate profitably enough that we can continue to grow our business and employ people. And the most important variable is that we remain inspired, that we make consistent beer, that we care about quality and quality control. So that's why we brought on uh, our first general manager. We hired Kim Schneider uh, just recently. She's been there for 
a month and a week. Uh, she's got more hardware in her brewing career than my brewery has in its existence. She is a badass, and she is helping us continue to evaluate and and roll out quality control and evaluate SOPs. So our beer is as good as it can be inside the can for as long as it can be. <clears throat> can, no, can, can. Can, can. So here comes that, that yeah. one question that, that you know, with, with every brewery, at least craft brewery, always tends to come up, and I'm, I'm sure you, you've been asked this before. AB shows up with that blank check that you just pulled out of your wallet. Uh-oh. Uh, dep- it depends on how many zeros on the blank check. I mean, I, I, I have watched some fucking ham-handed, I'm sorry we sold out to the big boy videos. This is the deal. I got currently 32 employees. We offer health insurance. Really? Wow. Fuck yeah, man. I don't think wow. Holy <laughs> shit. There you go. Like that, I is, give, is that a first on this show that we've heard a brewery offer health insurance? Oh, we, we've at had least, breweries on that offer, it. but say it, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, okay. We are a small business, okay. and we give a fuck about our employees sure. in, a, in a really you know, finite and measurable way, as opposed to giving. I have not gotten a raise in two years. Nor has to the my manager. business partner in Jason. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, that's deliberate. We I was, just, I was being we facetious. Decide, yes, I know. I'm just, <laughs> I just rolled I mean, right over I guess over as, that. O- as owners, <laughs> that's, that's to be expected. I want the people that are a part of our organization to know that we that. genuinely yeah. care about their longevity within our organization. We want them to build their careers with us because we're trying to do some important shit in beer, in business, in mm-hmm. food, in Detroit, in Michigan. In the process, uh, if AB came along and said, blank check, here's 50 million bucks right now for your brand and your business, I would say, let's negotiate some really finite details about my employees, how long they're going to be here, their 401ks, their health insurance, their raises and all that shit. And if I could look back on that and say, everybody got ahead 50% more in their lives than they are right now, I wouldn't fucking balk at it. Anything less would be ego. Mm -hmm. Anything less would be an idealism that's getting in the way of people's lives. I worked for a little beverage company, a little independent company called Vitamin Water. I had a couple of shares. <laughs> Coca Cola bought us. Now I own a fucking brewery, right? Right, and a house. And my daughter's about to go to college. It was not much money, but I put it in the right places at the right time. Mm-hmm. And I would be a fucking hypocrite to deny any of my employees the opportunity to do that same fucking thing in their lives. Damn. Hey, wicked we customers. It's a different. Oh, never mind. <laughs> When you ask that question, you, you ask the right person, you're going to get a different perspective on how they would approach that mm-hmm. exact question and, and why oh, they would, believe, and why it. they would why they would do it. Well, yeah. plus I, I don't think there's a lot of breweries that have 30, 40, you know, employees. employees. Most people run that skeleton bone structure where they've got a brewer or two, just enough bar staff because you know a lot of places also don't have kitchens. So if you're a small brewery, you have two to three people operating the brewery system. You've got four, maybe six people running the brewery or the bar. So you're looking at a 10-person operation. You're not looking at a full-on, you know. Well, and this is a seven-barrel brewery too, right? Like I, I'm i brewing less than 1,000 barrels this year. I have three full-time uh, brewers, one part-time, one general manager that also touches beer and me. That's five people that touch beer, plus my business partner, Jason, Chef Matt, his entire team, and everybody front of house. We take the quality of the experience that we create incredibly serious. Do you think that your care for them reflects to their your care for the stuff that goes past them? Do you think what's that one of the, the reasons that like going back to why eighteen out of twenty people who will say go to batch, do you think that's because of what you put into your staff that the staff puts out such a better product that it ref- it like oozes out to the consumer? I fucking hope so, man. It's 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 not it's such a fucking heady idea to be an employer. It's such a heady idea to be a boss. And it is such a heady idea to be responsible for people's existence, right? For their paycheck, for how they pay their bills, for how they choose to vacation, for the flexibility they have for their lifestyle. We all have day jobs. Mm-hmm. We all do shit. That pays our bills, and then we have one podcast 
two music beer festival, three marketing agencies that we're doing on the side to express who we are as fucking humans. And if I am not thinking about operating my business for day job one for all my employees in the same way and not excited about them having opportunities to grow who they are, their skill sets, what they want to do with their lives, I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I just did a, uh, a, a conversation with uh, the Detroit Economic Club, some people from EY. Shout out to Angie Kelly. You're the bomb. And uh, Rebel Nell, my wife's uh, business, along with her business partner, uh, Amy Peterson. And we were having a conversation about career transition, right? People that want to do the next thing and where to find the inspiration and the gall and, 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 and the ability to transition to the next thing. And I can't advocate enough for businesses who give a fuck about their employees. Mm. It, they're, not every business does. And if you're working for one that does, you're working for the wrong fucking company. Just you want to punch, you punch, a, punch a clock and earn your paycheck? There are a lot of jobs out there to do that. But this world that we're a part of, this gig economy, this innovation, this you know, lack of you know, national health care, and these, these pieces that make it hard to survive, like you got to find a company that gives a fuck about who you are as an employee. And who they are as a business and how the role that you guys get to play together in the community, that's that's what I have to do. That's the walk I have to walk. I think that's a great way to kind of finish. Uh, uh, I think the I, beverage I, guild is in the right hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do have one more question. Yeah, yeah man. And <laughs> oh, of course it is. <laughs> This, I run this shit. Right. <laughs> At least in here. In Detroit, on the other hand. I run this shit. It's that Steven's job. Yeah, that's that's the... Uh, it's our producer's job. Our producer, thank you. Right. Ryan, there you go. Shout out to Ryan over there. Shout out Ryan. And Annie. So my question to you guys, and I think it's one that kind of harkens to what we do, what you do, and everything that you do. What... Don't do it. The voodoo that you do? Do it. The salt and pepper? Do it. Damn it. What is it do you think <laughs> No, that's just you. Uh what is it do you think benefits the industry as a whole that we need more of and what do you think hinders industry as the whole that we need to move away from? You know, we talked about it earlier in regards to the fact that there are a lot of groups out there that are um going person versus person in regards to ha- who has the bigger um seller, we'll say. Uh in regards to what <laughs> they're uh they have in the seller. Uh, and not necessarily how they're drinking the cellar. So, like, what do you feel is, you know, is needed for this, you know, especially for the upcoming, you know, craft drinks guild? Is it craft liquid? Detroit Craft Beverage Guild. Detroit. CBG. All right. Detroit Craft Beverage Guild. So, like, what would you need? Like, what do you want to see in regards to it? And what do you want to see kind of, like, move away? Do you do you feel these groups that are in there are more hindrance and more annoying than anything? Do you think it's a necessary evil or something good? Like, which, what, which, I'm sorry, which groups are you talking about? Like, like uh, Facebook groups, group. Beer Advocate, yeah. Untapped. Um, the, the you can let you can you can put it to Dave if you nah, want nah, nah. Uh, well, I, I, I to be your, Switzerland I over here. I want your perspective on this, and <laughs> no, I will say that the no. enthusiasm for craft beverage as an art form and as a um, I don't know a, a uh, uh, like a popularity like a, a a a current relevance thing does not exist without people talking about it, and that doesn't happen without good marketing. Um, I think that the one thing that I would like new breweries and the industry in general to do a better job of is storytelling. Um, that's why Good Pour exists. That's why Batch Brewing Company has had success. Uh, storytelling about who we are as makers in this region in southeastern Michigan is important to continue to generate enthusiasm about what we do here. It's, you know, Grand Rapids, what are they, Beer City or something like that? Like, Beer City USA. Beer City USA. Cool. <laughs> they, I mean, uh, wow. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me two years from now when you know some of the less exciting breweries in Grand Rapids have closed and some new breweries have opened in Detroit and population things change and we look at like quality God, of quality. We could do this for another two hours. But, yeah, so man. Let, let But you just brought up and we talked to a lot of brewers, proprietors. Do you see a craft beer bubble? I mean, we have. We'll have 400 breweries by the end of this year that are open up in production facilities, you know, tap rooms. And, and all the next stuff. year. It's like three weeks before the year ends. I, uh, so, okay, so, so do you I, see a craft beer bubble? Because Bubble. 
bubbles, bubbles is one of those uh, one of those terms that uh, will often be brought up on where people see where the industry is going to go. I don't see it as a bubble. What I see is it's going to be a shifting number as far as the amount of breweries that open up and then the amount of breweries that close at the same time. That number is going to go up. For me... Well, which, 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 you just put up two different numbers. Are there yeah. going to be more breweries that open up or more breweries that close? There's going to be more breweries that open up. But here, here's the thing. is That number is not going to shoot up uh, astronomically. So we're going to plateau what you're thinking. Yes, but it's going to be newer breweries that are being introduced while it's being plateaued. So what it's going to do is it's going to create this idea that it's staying, that's sustaining the numbers. But you're going to get different breweries and newer breweries that are opening up, and then the ones that aren't able to, I guess, in the crude terms, Me. hack it, uh, <laughs> they're going to go away. I'm so going to be... gain one, lose one, gain one, lose one, and kind of say. And that's it. that's the way it's been since 2011. I, I'll be really interested to see what happens from a volume standpoint. Um, I did a TED talk in Detroit before we even opened and talked about craft beer, and my projection was the hyper local brewery. That does 500 barrels a year. That has a great restaurant, has a sustainable business that speaks to their community and does something cool. So I think that the question that we'll boil down to from bubbles and sagging or bursting of bubbles has less to do with craft beer and more to do with the overall economy. Um, people have discovered that beer doesn't taste like one thing, and that's not going backwards. That right. now exists in the fucking zeitgeist. Pe- there's a spectrum zeitgeist. of beer flavor wow. that people expect out of drinking beer. And now that that exists, it's not going to vanish. So how is it done well? The bottle. Was that? You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Yeah. No. The, 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 the knowledge exists, right? So now it boils down to like operating business well and the economic environment to operate business within. The economy is going to fucking take a little nosedive here, and it's going to be in the next year to 18 months, and we'll Two see who survives and, and what it looks like. And the reality is that, and especially in a, a market like Detroit, which has been so underrepresented in restaurants, that's now over-indexing per capita restaurants, and people are struggling to have quality talent to work in their kitchens and work in the brewery and work on the floor to build their business. There has to be... Uh, a really deliberate uh, uh, environment to create new talent, to train new people. I'm also working on another project. I'm not going to talk about that now. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. I'm a, w- uh, one thing I want to mention is I want to shoot it. I do. Yeah, I want to shoot it over to consumers. That's that's going to be one of the bigger things that I want to see. I'm a consumer. Perfect. I want to see the consumer get deeper into what the business is like, rather than just what the beer is. And I guess what I mean by that is what's being put into those beers and what is the backstory of that brewery? Yeah, where do you want your dollar going? Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're going to look at these breweries. You're going to see these beers for what they are. They're a barrel-aged beer. There's something that you want to wait in line for. Um, what's going into that? Uh, so how than, do you how do you attract a person to do that? Because not everyone's going to sit down and listen to a podcast. Not yeah. everyone's going to read an article on Good Pour. Yep. Yeah. You know how are they going to get that story within the the minute minute and a half time that they want to spend? So yeah. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go basically as a brewery you're gonna go to where people are paying attention the most, and uh, one of those main things that's going to happen. Aside from podcasts, because they are growing uh, as far as uh, listenership, um, you're going to go to your Facebook stories, Instagram TV. Uh, that's going to be one of the bigger ones. You're going to go to where people are paying attention the most um, and, and really tell the story of that brewery. And That's one thing that Stevens mentioned more than a few times today is telling that story of where that beer is coming from. And if people are able to actually pay attention a little bit more of where that beer is coming from, where they came up with the style, why they named it the way it was, uh, these breweries are putting that information out there, and they're letting them know this is who we are, what this beer is, and where it came from, and where we want it to be for you. So, whose story do you know that you want everyone to know about? Batch well, Brewing deep. Company. That's deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> batch Brewing Company. So, Batch Batch Brewing, yeah. obviously. I mean, yeah. you know, we we let's. I'm, I'm going to be Secondary. honest. We've, we've talked about Batch for the entire the secondary entire show. So let's. Let's drafting table. Drafting table. Okay. Uh, I would love for people to pay attention a little bit more to drafting table. They're doing a lot of a little from, bit more to their story, not their beer. Correct. There's two main beers that people are really talking about right now. One is Palatable. Bean. 
palatable, palatable and palatable. vanilla bean. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Two, those are the two beers that I was going to mention. Those are the two beers that they're paying attention to the most. One thing that happened in a God, uh, by the I'm way, like, I'm, good, they participate in feel good tattoos. They yeah. do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Say so, hi to uh, Aaron and uh, Kristen. Aaron yeah, great, great, yeah, great couple, great business owners, Man. great brewers. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, those right. that brewery right there is is really one of those breweries that I'm talking about that people need to pay attention to as far as the story goes, because of who they are, where they came from, how they're operating their brewery. There are other beers besides those two. Big beers that people are in there waiting in Pro line Pills. for. Pro Yeah. I, I can't remember what the name of the beer was. I did it on Good Pour. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now for whatever reason. But even when I posted that beer, there were a lot of people who were commenting saying, I didn't even know that beer was even on the list because I was going there for Mean Mala. You know what I mean? Like, right. I had no idea that beer even existed when I was there at Oktoberfest. I think it was the event that they were doing. Uh, and, and I completely... Missed out on on what that beer was, uh, so it, 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 they're doing more than two beers right. where people are waiting in line. So if people are paying attention a little bit more to what they're doing, they're going to be able to experience an infinite amount of delicious beer at smaller breweries that are basically doing exactly what Stephen is doing at Batch, taking care of employees and really putting all they have into craft beer in Michigan. What about yeah. you, Stephen? I mean, you have so many friends and so many connections within the industry whose story do you love to hear about do you know so well they're like man i know this person works so hard puts their blood sweat and tears metaphorically into their beer like what who's you know who's on your list of someone that you'd love to see their story a little more pushed out as opposed to just maybe their beer or someone that you'd like to collaborate with right Sure. Uh, so there, there are definitely a number of breweries whose uh, beer I think um, uh, really jives with you know uh, what we do a batch, and I can imagine making beer with, and also you know do really cool stuff for their community. Um, I really like the uh, dudes at One Well in Kalamazoo. Those are great guys. They got a great community uh, perspective. Um, they are they're creative. Uh, they're yeah they're they they have a lot of fun doing what they're do what they do, and it is an absolute reflection of where most of us come from in craft. We're just homebrewing, right? They they just have unabashed fucking fun doing what they do. Um, I mean, who makes a beer just like throwing sweet water donuts in there? Too? <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously. I mean, seriously, this is too much fun. I, I, I never, I, well, I, I don't eat sweet, so it just kind of like phases over me the whole craze of sweet water donuts. Oh, that shit was so good that I actually put the donut in the beer and I just let it sit oh. there. I and, went and then drink the beer. Now, now yeah. that's the thing is, is that I've, I've done, I've done the donut in the beer. I was at. Um, some brewery in Asheville, and I had the the donut and the beer, but it just it just doesn't. I don't know. It's just not for me. Kind of like when I had the the s'mores beer over at Burnt Marshmallow, and they right. actually burnt a you know did a they Burnt Marshmallow burnt inside my yeah. beer. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell you what, uh, there are a couple other things I I'm I'm excited about. Um, uh, another one for your list for Detroit breweries um, that are on their way to opening a uh, or a second location. Tenacity from Flint is opening a location in Detroit. Rob. Uh, is a buddy of mine, um, and they have been uh, really active in the uh, community effort around uh, water quality uh, in Flint since the complete fucking disaster that right. happened in Flint with uh, water from the uh, Flint River. Yep. And um, they... They also participate in the Feel Good Tap, and they are opening another location. These are these are cats that are incredibly engaged in not only the beer community but the overall community. I think they deserve a shout out, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about their story. Um, and as well, uh, uh, River Rouge is opening another location. Oh, just there over in Oak Park. <laughs> yeah, Ed, Ed's opening another location in Ed Park uh, in Oak Park, and I think that's a really exciting. We can call it Ed Park. I'll call it Ed Park. Ed Park. Oak Park is now called Ed Park. <laughs> Thank you, Oak Stencil. And um, I, I think that uh, we're 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 going to see some really exciting things come out of uh, what he is doing. Um, and the other organization that I think really de deserves uh, more storytelling uh, is Sullivan's. 
Yeah. Can't, yeah. Wow. Cannot, uh, can, cannot uh, <laughs> overstate uh, what a good job I think those guys do in cider, in mead, and beer. They're r- righteous fucking dudes total gutter yeah. punks yeah, man. i'd like to offer them an occasional additional shower but other than that i give them two <laughs> two two arms around their stinky cuerpos i love you motherfuckers um they they're 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 greatest cats and i'm trying to lure them down to uh my my uh, new neighborhood they're down they're badass motherfuckers and if there's an organization that is less grassroots than that i i mean or more grassroots than that i want to know because those guys are all in as makers. They're not trying to tell stories. They're not marketers. They're not God, no, flashy. No. These are dudes that <laughs> like are, doing it. We make it. good shit. Doing it. Yep. And if you don't like it, fuck you. And that's it. That's yeah. who we are. Yeah. And those guys could uh, use a little bit more uh, sunshine too. Yeah. So as we kind of cut down, um, cut it out. obviously, Dave, thank you so much for coming. Good pour. You, you can check them out. What's your website? Uh, no website. Just no website. basically social, man. Just uh, good pour. Facebook, just good pour. Instagram, Twitter. Instagram, Twitter. Just those three guys right there. Tinder. Yes, of course. We'll find Grand Point. <laughs> <Tinder. at> <laughs> Steven, uh, you've got Detroit Brew Experiment. Everything. You've got Detroit Craft. Yeah, good luck. Beverage Guild. You've got, uh, let's see here, Feel Good Tap, as well as Batch Brewing over in Detroit. You guys have a full menu over there. Definitely go out and check the Chef pool boys. Matt. Thanks, man. For Chef sure. Matt does a great job over there. Now, you were talking about drafting table. Drafting table was actually here the day before they opened, episode twenty five. Yep. They've, also, they've also been here two more times, episode ninety six and one forty nine. So about every year they show up onto our show. Wow, this is my first time here. Once a year. So we, yeah, well, you're one fifty seven. Yeah, right. <laughs> we've, we've been going for a little you're bit. You're allowed but, to come back. Oh yeah, but yeah. Uh, cool. we'll, we'll see you next we'll week. Fix we've also had uh, <laughs> Sellerman's on uh, on episode just, ten. God, oh. Episode ten, we had oh, Dominic but on. His, but Dom's so far away. Did they get the you shitty drunk? No, you're thinking you're thinking uh, Ian's thinking of batch. Oh, yeah, Ian's yeah. Budweiser story, which was episode 89 with uh, Shannon Long of Pure Brews America, now Bruce Brew Export. Hey, what's up, Shannon? As well as if you go to the Beer Tour Guy, which is one of our secondary podcasts here on Better on Draft, uh, we had Steve, uh, who is the guy from Motor City Brew Tours, oh, talk yeah. to Steve Johansson. Uh, yes, <laughs> I was like Joe Hansen. Yes, yes. Uh, he was talking to the Sellermans guys. Episode fifteen of Sellermans. Oh yeah. We appreciate you guys coming on out. Don't forget to check out our brand new show on our network, which is the Brews Brothers. Bruce I just saw, Brothers. Just saw them last night for the uh, not last night, two nights ago for the very first time. Check them out. They go live on Facebook every other Wednesday. They do a show in studio and then a show on site. Uh, so their next show will be in two weeks, a uh, week and a half from today. Uh, their latest show will be posted within the next couple of days on Better on Draft. Don't forget to check out our sponsors. North Center Brewing over in Northville, Michigan. Zatuna Liquor over in Rochester Hills. You can find us every fucking Friday. <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash better on draft. We are live. Join us. Chat with us. We are very interactive. We pay attention to everything. And uh, let's uh, let's get the camera on everyone. You can all say goodbye because no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Peace.